I think for the most part, this whole summit came about because as many people have said to me, we work hard, we want to get somewhere, we want to do the right thing. How do we get there? We want to know what you're thinking. So today I will attempt to tell you what I'm thinking. We need some sort of new vision for 2013 and it's really important. Literally about a month ago, I said, I am burning up with all kinds of things that bother me, that really fuck me up in the head about what we're doing. I began to write down what I thought needed to be done for the way I do business, the way we run the radio channels, the way we run the television stuff. Who is communicating this to publicists? If I'm a publicist, I'm not sitting and thinking about the Howard Stern show. I'm thinking about some other fucking show that I see on TV. I'm not in the world of satellite. We better start fucking telling publicists and everyone else who we are. All of us, this is all of our job. The theme of today's meeting is this is everyone who's sitting here job do you know what if this show isn't here in three years you don't have a fucking job we should be blasting it on twitter we need to spread the word virally from now on we share all of our success with the world we're gonna get the word out in 2013. billy corgan was off the radar he came on our show and he sold albums how does every record company in the world not know about this because we're not telling them we're not doing our jobs. We're going to have packets distributed to publicists with all of the information I'm giving you. We're going to become packet and marketing crazy. And we're going to build relationships with everyone's management. We're in satellite. It's not the same reach as terrestrial radio. We got to get the word out. We got to shake hands. It's like we're running for office. It's like we're Jehovah's Witnesses. We knock on people's doors and get guests in here. Guests are the best bit that we can have. And every one of these guests should be on our show. When I fucking hear people say, well, that guy's not gonna wanna come in here. It's bullshit, from now on, I don't wanna hear it. If someone says, hey, let's pitch Tom Cruise, why don't we have a couple of 30 second donuts, the best commercials, to show Tom Cruise who's done our show. Billy Joel, David Bowie, Julia Roberts, Paul McCartney. Where's the fucking commercial that we send to publicists? Don't have one. Imagine. Howard Stern and an Uncle Sam hat. Howard Stern wants you. And then show them, bam, 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 the clips, this to that. Show them a production piece that tells them a success story. Then we begin to email people and we blast them. And by blast them, I mean every month, no one is going to forget that we exist. We are gonna be like Moonies, leverage friends of the court. Whitney Cummings was doing jack shit. Jerry Seinfeld had a show that was about to go off the air. He used our show. This woman was nowhere when she did our show. John Stewart used to come on when The Daily Show started and he'd be a regular guest. Adam Levine owes us, man. And David Letterman, I've done his show probably 27 fucking times and he's only been on our show twice. These guys are friends of the court. They're gonna get an email. Hey, you know, it's been um, 10 years. Today's the day you were on our show 10 years ago and we haven't seen you. We were there for you the whole time. David Bowie will probably go on Letterman or some bullshit show like that where they don't say a fucking thing about David Bowie. I'm on here regularly talking about what a genius David Bowie is. Does David Bowie know it? No. There's got to be an organized campaign. Gets the pamphlet that Sirius helped us create. He gets the Howard TV donut right away. He gets it. His publicist gets it. His record company gets it. His management gets it. We don't call up a record company or David Bowie's management and say, um, would you like to do the show? And then when we get our first no, we give up and say, fuck it. This is what we need to do. We need to have A-list guests once a week. Someone's got to sit down and think this through. Eddie Vedder's never done my show. Play tape of me on the air talking about Eddie and singing along to Jeremy Spoke. I'm blowing this guy on the air every single day, practically. Does he know it? Does he get copies of it? He should be bombarded. Neil Young shouldn't be able to shit without hearing somebody talking about me. Oh my fucking god, brilliant. Very nice. WNBC Absolutely clap. Absolutely. WNBC brilliant. clap. I you know what? It was it actually hey, about made the, about the my nerves rattled. That was like yeah. tense and 
and moving and emotional. Yeah. Emotional. If, if he would have done something like that, everybody would have been paying rapt attention yeah. to him in the audience. Wow. It, how, how about it, it, the uh, how about the uh, Jim Jarmusch black and white uh, artistic <laughs> event? Did, man. Yeah, did the opposite of the Stern Show in terms of Johnny creativity, Depp, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I I literally have like agitation in my stomach watching that, like like yeah. a madman, right? Go, Dad. You, 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 so you got a little yajita. No, I, I, it just shows that, honestly, 79 probably should have spoke for five minutes total. I mean, honestly. Oh, he, yeah, you could he, condense he, it. Yeah. He, he, he obviously embarrassed himself with the word diarrhea. I, and oh, it always tells God. us that Jeremy spoke. It's literally yeah. <laughs> everybody. Fine. Everybody in the comments was like packets and donuts, donuts and packets. packets. That's all. He could talk That's what By he's the way, John, John, John Stewart's on Twitter now, everybody. So let uh, old John know what Howard thinks of him. His career was jack shit before he met him. Book uh, timestamp uh, yeah. it. Yeah. Send it to John Stewart. Do it like in hundreds, and he's gonna have to listen to it. What what uh, about what about that redheaded girl that he doesn't know the name of? <laughs> <laughs> this woman. This woman. Uh, this woman. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um. So greetings, Brown. everyone. Welcome to another edition of Radio Gunk. Your opening bun was brilliant. That was Thank absolute you. absolute brilliance. Um. So yeah. So I'm excited. This actually makes us excited to do it as well. So I'm I'm <laughs> thrilled to have you all here. So did you want? What did we want to start with? So did we want to start with the John? Did we want to start yes. with something? All right, so uh, so I went and got audio of the day of the Pelican Brief to see if there were any innuendos and clues. And thanks to Boff. He gave me a Howard 100 news report of that week. So I scanned through it. I'm going through it. And John Lieberman apparently got to Gary's oh, I remember desk him. and they double booked <laughs> Jewel and Jenny McCarthy on the same fucking day somehow. Gary did oh, as right. the Pelican. Reads. This. So yeah. he is like panicked as Lieberman's doing this report. One and of them he's, like, oh. he's like, oh my God, yeah. of all of these, of all of these, I possibly do this. Why today? Why today? So he's <laughs> panicking about the meeting, but he won't say the meeting. Yeah, you know, yeah. You're not going to be that worried unless it's coming. Okay. So, uh, okay. So we're going to do how 100, 100 reports on Gary panicking. Yeah. Yes. As the Stern Show's executive producer, Gary Delabotti is a very busy guy. Sometimes mistakes happen. On Tuesday, Gary booked two celebrities for the same time period. Jewel and Jenny McCarthy. So we will have Jewel today. For those of you who were excited about Jenny McCarthy coming in, she will not be in. Whoever gets here first will put her the air. <laughs> like a, Gary, the fuck, Gary the two fuck up. Well, you can't you can't do that to people. You can't say, uh, "Oh, you got here first, but to the other person, well, you can't go on." The great guest race. Yeah, rather, rather have. Can I, can I explain something? Yeah. I right, just so you know. It's not the smartest thing, but it's not what I meant. What I meant was whoever gets here first, we'll put on, and then we'll put the other one on after. After? So, so, so what am I going to do, the show till noon? Well, that, but I, I was... I mean, I, wanna, I got a life too, you know. I was trying to make the best of the worst. I wasn't applying that we'd send somebody home. Oh, so like, in other words, I'd interview someone at 8 o'clock, yeah. and then at 9 o'clock we can do the second interview. Or at 8, 8, 8, maybe somebody at quarter to 8, somebody yeah. at 8.30. All right. Is what it was my, but I was not applying to send anybody home, Howard. I see. Well, he's got a point. All right. Good point. Send him home, Howard. <laughs> Gary, can I send you home? Man, you can do whatever you want to me. <laughs> nah, I'm not going to do anything. Hey, hey Howard. Uh, for Gary, a very bad day. Jewel stays. Jenny returns another day. It's Howard one. Yeah, of course Jenny returns another day because she's not worth a million fucking dollars. Right. That's why. They just flip the coin. They're the same level. I don't know. I don't know. Jewel is right, not exactly a hot pr commodity in no, of 2013. Course Fucking no. they, they're, the, they're the exact same level. That's really the dilemma because they can't play the, you know, the A-list gig. Neither, neither one of them are A-list. All right. Sorry. Could you continue with this clip? Yeah. Yes. Yes. This is, okay. So now Lieberman is at Gary's desk and he is basically reporting on Gary panicking as he's okay. apologizing to Jenny's people. Howard 100 News. Oh. We're oh. there. Kevin, it's Gary. How about if Jenny comes here, really? gets here at 8.30? And we try to get her on by quarter to nine or nine at the latest. Would you, would you do that? This is completely my fuck up, and I'm trying to do the best I can to make a bad situation better. It's the behind the scenes you don't hear on the air. 
Stern Show executive producer Gary Delabate feverishly working to correct his mistake. He double booked Jenny McCarthy and Jewel for the same time slot. And now he's trying to make it right with Jenny's publicist. I promise you, if I could move it, I would. That was run so But I can't. Because if Jenny, if Jenny were in the same position, she wouldn't want me to move her. But Kevin, anything I could do to make this right, I, I'm just yeah, trying to do my very best. You just tell me what you need. Final. Exactly what would they do to make this right? Come in on I, Thursday? Come in next Friday? Times. Yeah, I, really. I, I the moment comes when Gary realizes he'll have to move Jenny to another date. Well, uh, well, a date that's well, probably well, open, well, so well. let me know because I will. I, I have somebody there that I'll move off to. Okay, man, Jenny. Man. I'm so sorry, Kevin. I don't know what else to say. It's just one of those things, and, yeah, and there's no excuse for it. Right, She's not coming. Gary, this is an honest mistake. Well, there are, all mistakes are honest. Mistakes are mistakes. I mean, I don't think I can't think of a mistake that's malicious, but it's still a fuck up. How are you feeling right now? Awful. Awful. I mean, just just fucking. I couldn't. It couldn't have happened on a worse day. It couldn't have happened with worse people. Jenny, somebody we know. I, she, I'm sure she's not happy about it. This is everything about it's bad. John Lieberman, Howard, 100 News. It couldn't have happened not with bad, worse right? people. I like it. <laughs> what, so, 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 like, what's the follow up? What's the follow up, Lieberman? Why couldn't it have happened on a worse day? What's so bad about this day? What is it's it today? Day. What's going on it today? Is, it's yeah, got to be right? the day. The Pelican Brief. Nice yep. one. How do you, so you not have... put that down in a calendar on oh, a sticky yeah. note? I mean, with, with <laughs> like, you, you know what? It's his oh, only job. You had one job. Your job was to book people on the fucking show. How do you not have a giant whiteboard in your little shithole office there showing the days of the month per <laughs> month? And who's coming in? Oh, and Monique, well, it's a four-hour oh, show. Out. It's a four-hour <laughs> show. You can't book two guests on the same day? How incompetent is everybody? I mean, if you notice since then, and we talk about this all the time, they haven't booked multiple uh -huh. guests on the same day in how long? That's Forever. Just, that? That's, I mean, that has to be the impetus. Culture. They literally can't handle two guests in the same day. If you ask they me, they used to that's have easy. so many at K Rock. Oh, I know. They I, know two, I know, Bob. Three, go and they're big people. Go to the, yeah. Yeah. And Collins and phoners, everything. Phoners. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. None yeah, of it, that. It is, it is truly amazing because even then he was still doing almost a five hour show. And how the hell you couldn't have those, I mean, especially those two people. Jewel, you run out of steam with Jewel in 45 minutes because there really is not much there. And then Jenny yeah. McCartney, what are you going to get from her? Half hour of actually something interesting? It's not like Tom Cruise and Tom Selleck were coming on the same day. This is Jenny McCartney and Jewel. <laughs> Tom Selleck. But, you know, uh, Tom and Tom. Nice. <laughs> Very hip reference. David Hasselhoff. David <laughs> Gil Gerard. Gil Gerard well, and Tom Selleck. <laughs> <laughs> Fairway Maiden says it really well here. Don't they have a show, Meetings Daily, with 40 people working no, on the show? He, he Nobody says he realizes does. this. Until, well, like, how, right. It's not just – why isn't Jason – following up on this somebody else nobody else notices this but they're berating benji for being late and they're all bragging about how early they come in to do this shit and they can't get this right you know what the whole benji thing was just a ruse to get him out of the fucking um yeah whatever but of, i'm saying like you, off of air, off air. how early you come in all right so what's our next clip <laughs> uh so the next one is howard nebulously alluding to the meeting to Gary as he's trying to chide Gary during this. Well, I got I, I got a meeting after this. And uh, is this no is mention. this is that day. This is Pelican Brief also, Day. A key moment here too is Robin is not Robin is in the cancer throes and they are not mentioning her uh, reporting from home. So Robin's even not even aware of the meeting. Ah, <laughs> gotcha. <she's> from home. <laughs> you know, it would be no different today. Let's be honest. Yeah, exactly. no, 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 no idea. What? Meeting? What? What? Right. <laughs> Here we go. You could write a note. I'm explaining yourself. I mean, and not, not, not an email. No, I already wrote up to tell us And send her a gift. I'm sending her flowers. I, I can't even begin to tell you how All right. I'm All right. I'm so sorry. All right. I'm going to try and like be the grown up here and not get have my, my stack blown. I even dismissed the Howard TV camera during the commercial so they wouldn't get my fucking my tirade on the air. I'm zoning out because I, I'm so still thinking about that Jenny McCarthy's not in here today <laughs> that I literally kind of I was even thinking, Rob, maybe we should have had her at nine. Yeah, uh, uh, maybe. By the way, God forbid you couldn't work this out. Like, seriously. I know. Wow. I know. I know. 
Well, think about this. This is a 30 something year professional exactly. broadcaster who cannot figure out how to have two people on a That's four crazy. plus hour show, almost five hour That's show. Crazy. Yep. It well, doesn't make any sense at all. You know, it's as not- as Bond mentioned before, Dennis, I, I often go back to not, you know, 02 or 03. They would have five people on in the same day. Mo- Monique said, you know, two phoners, three people in the studio. Somehow it all worked out. They can't mm-hmm. figure it out. Now with Sirius, which is supposed to have unlimited time, which there's no rules, right? Right. We're only going to break, so we need a break, and they can't do it. With all that real estate, inexcusable. All right, let me finish this clip. Hang on. But I got to be out of here at 10. I got a meeting. Oh. Oh, uh, <laughs> Gary B, too fucked up. I could have had you do the news now, and then maybe Jenny at nine. Although you're probably not ready with the news, are you? Well, I'd have to get the clips pulled. Yeah, up. well, forget it. Yeah, he's forget scared. it. You can hear it. Uh, maybe that's what that's we should please, do. Maybe instead of under. how many times is Gary going to fuck up this month? Oh, what do you think if uh, we just p- put that? Jenny on at nine? What? I call back like right away. But I got to get out of ten. I understand. Yeah, Robin, I, I would have to do some sort of news now. I'm just trying to. I'm All just right, trying I'm to... getting the things See, pulled. I, up. Yeah. I could get Jenny to get here by eight thirty, you know, so that she nine would be the latest she'd get on, and maybe quarter to nine because if Jewel got here a little early, yeah. we could get her right on. But I have All to right. make that call immediately. All right, no, go ahead no. and make the call. Robin, I'll do a little abbreviated news now. You know, fuck you, Gary. I, like seriously, I, I. He is the most useless cog in the uh, fucking to, to wheel be, of society. To be just, fair, oh. he only ever did this once. He, I've never heard of him doing it again. You know, but it, it once doesn't matter. Is fine. Once it, is fine. It, it, just, he can't even still justify his existence, even if he only made that one mistake in thirty years. <laughs> True. Everybody in the chat, though, meeting the meeting is the Pelican brief. He won't say what it is. Like yeah. they're going to tear plugs. Usually, it is that. He's it's nervous the, about it's that the, meeting, and that's right. Gary knows what the meeting is. But they will not elaborate on what it's that. that You're right. It's How Pelican would, brief. He would not care if he didn't have the Pelican brief coming up right. that day. He would have There's just a been weird like, well, energy whatever. energy there that, that doesn't. Yeah, he's, exist. he's nervous. You could hear it in yep, his he's voice. Nervous. He's th- you're, all he's thinking about is how he's got to get through that presentation. Okay, well, hold on. So, um, could it be Jason noticed the double booking and sensing that change was coming, didn't say anything because that would be great for him? Uh, 1,000% that could be a possibility. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Conspiracy theory. The Iago that is Cason Japlin Jason would Japlin, definitely yeah. do that. All right, my weedy friends, we still haven't got back to the Pelican Brief. Oh, so. that, that's what we're supposed to be doing, right? <laughs> yes. Oh. So oh. without further ado, we no. are going to get back to it. And if you were with us last week, you know that we cut it off right down the center. So we were at like 27 minutes or so. So we right in the middle of him asking why Neil Young had not come onto the show. <laughs> no, we are definitely not doing a part three. Stop it. You just be quiet, Gunga Din. So let us get back to Howard Stern's Summit Revolution, and this would be the remastered version that Bon Jovial did. If you missed Bon Jovial's opening, it was fantabulous. Here we are, strategy, Neil Young, ongoing project. When I say something great about him, let him know it. So, you know, basically what's happening and, and what I realized after we did the last show is that you would think that this was the effort of like the last ditch ditch effort of a man who's dying, you know, that he needs to really get this show ramped up. He's already there. He has signed a new contract. He's making $90 million a year. He's going to make another $90 million, you know, for his next fucking. And so you would think the desperation was real, but in reality, all he's trying to do is change the narrative so that he, he remakes himself. This is the new Howard. So this is all in an effort to rebrand Howard. Okay, so help me, help you, help me is basically what he's saying. And so all of you motherfuckers who are sitting here who who probably don't do anything the moment I walk out the door Wednesday at like 10 o'clock in the morning, right? This is what you need to do in your downtime because you don't do enough. But it's also so stupid. He hired – a staff predicated on incompetence. You're hired because you're goofable, because you have no talent, because you have nothing going for you. That's why you're hired. And now he expects excellence from these same people. It makes no sense. You know True. what I mean? Like you're not yeah. going to suddenly transform these people into. The, it's a fucking Amway meeting, well, is what it well, is. That's exactly right. It, yeah, I mean, really, because he had what Sal and Richard. We're going to be writing stuff, right. to bring in, bring in yeah. yeah. celebrities. You you're not yeah. hired on talent on that show. No, that's right. No. It's as if I hired a designer who used to make French fries at McDonald's, like yeah. right before oh, they had is. my job. 
You know, wow. they is. don't they don't have the skill set to do what's needed to get it done. And it's going to take an inordinate amount of time for other people who really know how to do the job to train this person to do the job. Either that or they just fucking wing it. Neil Young shouldn't be able to shit without hearing somebody talking about me. <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? Why did Neil was, choose? Why didn't Neil choose us? Itchy. Itchy. I think um, I saw Neil on John Stewart. Now, this is me sitting back in that room. Remember that picture of my, my room and the, and the mm-hmm. sheets of paper? I kept writing shit like this down to the point of the, the seething with anger. Angry at myself, angry with this crew because we're not doing this stuff. Now we're going to do it. He chose John Stewart over us. I guarantee you, John Stewart hasn't spent a minute talking about Neil Young on the air. John gave him one plug. Not didn't give him, gave him one plug. It's Neil Young. Same when uh, I watch rock stars go on there. One plug, and he's gone. <laughs> but Neil Young doesn't have any, you know, he, management's like, eh, fuck it, Stern's dangerous or whatever. Oh, yeah, they call, they're not even thinking about us. We're not on their radar. we got to be on their radar. He doesn't know what we do. He doesn't know that we can offer him a live concert at one of those uh, things that they did for Bon Jovi yesterday on Sirius. We can leverage using all of Sirius with a recording art. We bribe them. We offer them stuff. We find out what appeals to them. That's what professional organizations do. We say to them, what do you need? Here's what we think we can offer. Eddie Vedder's never done my show. I talk more about Pearl Jam, again, more than Jon Stewart. Okay, so Jon Stewart has a half-hour show, right? Yeah, but the guest's on for four minutes, something like that, six minutes. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it's basically political, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And yep. so is there a reason he'd be talking about Eddie Vedder? Uh... No, this was the funniest. We talked about this last <laughs> week. Show Eddie the lead singer from Soundgarden on our show. Not Chris Cornell. Yeah. The lead singer. <laughs> the lead singer. From Soundgarden on our if show. You're making, if you're making damn. a slide for a presentation, that means you've done it in advance. Wouldn't you go – Wait a minute! I need to get this guy's name and then put yes. his name. It's like insert name here would still be on yes. that slide. Fucking <laughs> 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 retard. <laughs> get materials to Natalie Maines quick. Do, do, you, know the, do you know the Natalie Maines connection, Monique? No. Natalie Maines <laughs> helped uh, helmed the uh, West Memphis Three. So, you know those guys who got oh, yes. wrongly convicted of a murder in the early nineties. Mm-hmm. So Eddie Vedder, Depp, and Natalie Maines were in on that sort of they. We're trying to get them out of jail. And so that was yeah. they were doing all these charity concerts and shit. And that's her connection to Vetter. And oh, somehow very, they thought that that was somehow obscure. good work. Yeah. Good work, Thank John. You, Thank you, Bob. Good work, John. Oh, More than yeah. David Letterman. More than Jimmy Kimmel. So. Eddie Vetter. Oh, we can't get him. What do you mean we can't get him? We know Natalie Maine. She's a friend of the court. Total dig it, Gary. Okay. So yep. Beanie Mac. Let's get the, the material. Beanie Mac asked a question on the side. Why does Howard always compare his show to late night talk shows instead of to other radio shows? Because in his mind, he is on the same level as those late night talk shows. Absolutely. Or better. Yeah, and, and he, he always he, wanted yeah. to be that. Exactly. That is why he is a fucking delusional fucking pelican. That is not. That Bill's is to Natalie to and say, would you pass yeah. these on to Eddie personally? Personally. Play tape of me on the air talking about Eddie and singing along to Jeremy Spoke. I am telling I am telling you guys that everybody in the audience was seriously what the actual fuck? What the fuck are we watching right now? Oh my god. Okay. Video is strong of the lead singer of Soundgarden, that guy when he was on. That guy Those guys respect right. each other. That guy when he was on. That guy. That guy has he's no such name. A Neander- he's such an ignoramus. He's such Those a Neander- guys don't they don't just respect Spect each other. They're in a band together, and it was called Temple of the Dog, and they put out one album. So they're 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 fucking completely intertwined. Those all of those guys. Eddie, do you know the lead singer from Soundgarden? He was on our show. Can you imagine the embarrassment of that? Can you imagine the embarrassment of going to Natalie Maines with your pamphlets and having Natalie Maines? It's it's like a child. Can you just miss your mom for me tonight? Can you pass this note? Yeah, exactly. Here, Natalie. Pamphlet. Here's a pamphlet and a couple donuts. Please bring this over to Eddie Vetter. 
And he wants Tony <laughs> Visconti to do it for David Bowie. Can you just pass this on to David while he's working on a new album? It's just that I need him to come in if possible. Like Look, really at the soon. Tri- Look at the trifold with a map on the back sides. <laughs> We have a map to show you how to get to Sirius. It's great. Let's have a little star. <laughs> Someone's got to sit down and think this through. And we're going to be doing that in 2013. Kevin Bacon. <laughs> so, uh, guess so. Kevin Bacon was on. Kevin Bacon. I'm reading the tweets. I wasn't going to watch Kevin's show, but now I am. I really liked him on the Howard Stern show. Well, bullshit. Bullshit. Why wouldn't every publicist in the fucking world receive? He's so not in on the joke. Are they not able to get Kevin Bacon on the show? He's been on the show a hundred times. He's local. He lives literally like 20 blocks away. Wait. But you know what? Uh, every time I think of Kevin Bacon getting interviewed, all I think of is Jay Thomas interviewing Kevin Bacon when he brings up yes, getting ripped about, off yeah. in the, in the, in the pyramid scheme. The oh, that was horrible. Yes. That was horrible. <laughs> that was You're right. Great. I forgot about that. The silence was deafening. That was like sh- went, that was oh. probably Jay's worst interview ever. Jay, Jay went, "Oh, did I say something wrong?" Yeah, he knew. He knew. Copies of that every was horrible. with tons of tweets, tons of email. Fred compiles this email all the time. All this positive stuff that comes in should be put on a very attractive looking flyer, folder. <laughs> Jenny Hutt does it. She doesn't have all these people in her room. She wishes she had half of you working on her show. Yeah, what's the flyer? <laughs> it's the pamphlet, the Natalie, flyer. Did you see Natalie video. Maines with like one of those like poster boards like they have on the corners in Florida for the tire stores? <laughs> giving us <laughs> <the> fucking pamphlets. <laughs> People that pass by. Wait, wait, put Natalie Maines in a sandwich, sandwich board. board. <laughs> what about those big balloons with the waving arms? That they hook it up? You know, the giant long balloon? Yeah. I, I, I don't know about you guys, and I don't know if I'm watching this in 4K, but the more, the more, the more, the more Wigger Mortis skulks he makes across that stage, the more pre-distressed those boots are becoming. I can't oh, believe there's it. smoke rising from the floor by the end of the fucking thing. Exactly. Exactly. Like on Charlie Brown, the dirty kid. The <laughs> smoke comes up behind him. <laughs> okay, okay. Pig pen. All of those tweets about Kevin's show should have been sent to every major publicist in the country. Look what's going on for Kevin Bacon. Look what's going on. Look they don't know on. about this stuff. Letterman, Leno, Fallon, Kimmel combined don't have as many listeners as us. Do you, do you look at the ratings? They're crowing about The Tonight Show. The Tonight Show has about 2 million viewers. Look at them. If we, in fact, do have 23 million paid subscribers, and what they say is that you can double that amount in terms of who listens, oh, that the average they're, family they're, has two people listening to the radio. And if, in little... fact, we even have 40 to anywhere between 40 and 60 percent of those radios tuned to us, we beat all these guys. Do wait, publicists wait, wait, wait. know that? Stop, no. Stop, Do they stop, believe stop, it? Stop. No. Are we going to? So he just said that this, he has there's two people around every radio. And right. that means there's 46 million people listening to it. And 60 percent of the 46 million people, which is roughly what 26 million 26. people yeah 26 million people are listening to the CERN show but no one knows they exist like right. you got to get pamphlets out and flyers flyers you can't get a guy on show. flyers <laughs> yeah howard <laughs> math is the best math. fucking math it is where, uh, have, azores is a good point where, where is guys where is buckwald and all this you think how much input where is, he's got to be there, right? He's got to at least be watching this on the side. What is his input in this? Yeah, Mon, can you can you text someone to find out if if Buckwald was oh, there good, and Turk good was thought, there? Mom. Oh, I, I did send that off. I did get I did get an answer too if Turk was there. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Give me a second. I forgot all about that because it came it came in kind of late. Uh, wait, wait, wait. So you guys you guys saw Jeff Schick in the beginning, right? He's sitting next to Howard on the right. That's Jeff Schick. Yes. At the What's very it? beginning, when I was so, when I couldn't get on oh, last week, I was oh, that's the first that thing was. I wanted so, to say. Judy yeah, Bobitti, Judy Bobitti makes a great point. Twenty six million, but they are in trouble. <laughs> like literally, like if you have twenty six million listeners, does it? You're not no, in trouble. It, n- there is no trouble. It's a rebranding. Period. I that's know, what I this know, is. I know. But that, the way he's the way he's 
presenting that's the population of Australia. That's, we're in trouble. Basically. I'm in trouble. And then he's telling his staff, you're so incompetent, you're so unemployable, yet I want perfection out of you that you're unemployable if you don't work here. That doesn't that doesn't factor in either, right? You, you're unemployable. You cannot be productive anywhere but here, but I'm expecting pure excellence from you after this one meeting. By the way, Marcy was there, just so you know. Oh, oh yeah. That's of course. Oh, amazing. Never sitting answer. front and center. It. Sitting front and center. Mm-hmm. And to convince them, yes, that's what we're doing in 2013. 23 million paying customers. And I'm going to say 60%. <laughs> I don't know if that's exactly right, but that's what. Okay. 23 million paying customers. 60% of them listen to us I'm exclusively. Two. Times two. Okay. So, right. So, so it would oh, basically be the good. same thing. Times sixty percent. Okay, so that- <laughs> I gotta do math. it's actually the same. So if he would have said twenty three million paying customers and fifty percent of them listen to us exclusively with two million. people at the with two people at their at the radio would be the twenty three million, wouldn't it? Exactly. And it's exactly- he's an idiot. I mean, that's that's just the funniest idiot. part about everything. He's an idiot. <laughs> That's the funniest part. He's an idiot. Oh my god, this is so fucking funny. Yeah, twenty-seven point six million is the exact number. Yeah. <laughs> if you really, if you want to, if you want to splice my fast math in my Jesus head. Jesus Christ. Okay. Publishers should hear. <laughs> they should have it ingrained in them. Ingrained. But they ingrained. don't. It's a horrible usage of that word. Oh my look god. At the body language. Wiggle Mortis. He can't look at. Look at that. Wow. Wow. Look at that. That's fucking disturbing. I mean, that that slide is so disturbing. You put a love heart. Oh, the fuck, love. that's weird. <laughs> so, wait, look if you look up look love at heart. That body language. Ingrain is really true. not a really good word for this. No, not, um, not at all. No. Firmly fix or establish a habit, belief, or attitude in a person. Like I think, yeah, I think that's like a complete improper usage of that of that no. word. Okay, Richard Jesus, Christie. Jesus. <laughs> writes a letter to Complete Brad. Improper usage of a love heart. I mean, about Kansas and poster on the wall. Listen to that. So you fucking love Brad Pitt. You fucking love him. Big deal. Yeah, what is that fun. doing me? You've said it on the air. Why don't you write him a letter? <laughs> a letter. But of course, because you're it's 2013. Hand it core group of people, the strategists. <laughs> you- Dear Sire Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> My what what is a you like to... <laughs> You see him writing with like cursive, you know, with like a, like <laughs> with a monocle on like Winona Ryder and his... <laughs> with a with a feather quill. <laughs> right with a hair letter <laughs> with a pen Seriously. and a hair plug. What, 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 for what soon, year are we I in? Want you to arrive on a thousand hour show. Post wit. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Dear Sire Pitt. Oh my god, this is so fucking funny. You're going to be major in getting me Brad Pitt on the air. Oh, you're going to be major. Talk about how inspired you were when you were sitting in Kansas and you saw a guy from Kansas make it. That you were ridiculed because you had posters of Brad Pitt on your wall. You were ridiculed on our show. And, And that day that you started crying or something in the studio was phenomenal. Send it to him. We've got video. To, we got a fucking. Vi- we have a television channel that records all of this. Brad Pitt should see that. A grown, a grown man. You should write crying. him and say, <laughs> Mr. Pitt, Mr. I need Pitt, you to come in here. And- let me show you. Let me show you the poster I had on my filthy wall. <laughs> My gross bedroom with like splooge marks all over the fucking wall. Um, because, because of course, Brad Pitt doesn't get any fan mail, so of course this no. one's gonna be no, like no, have no. sparkles on it right. and like hearts right. and stickers. Brad would know it's special because it'd have that wax stamp that closes the envelope <laughs> yeah. delivered it delivered by a man on, on horseback. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Best tidings, sir. Um, <laughs> Great, and he great, takes a great, bottle great of points. bourbon out of his jacket and drinks <laughs> it. The, the official, he had the official crispy seal on the back, yeah. <laughs> which is just like a paw print of a squirrel. <laughs> it smells like bean sprouts. Yeah. Great, great point by. Uh... <laughs> Whoa. 
Oh, I have the, such the visual in my head. What, John? What? Great point. What? Great point. Great, great point. But and this is classic Sizzle Chest. So Sizzle Chest sixty nine says, <laughs> said by the man who. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get a clip of John saying Sizzle Chest. Said by the man who doesn't touch his own mouth. <laughs> oh, Dennis is dying again. <laughs> this is <laughs> Sizzle Chaz, you've got it again. <laughs> These names, these names. That was my acting name. <laughs> so they called me in college. <laughs> oh, I think I have a fever. <laughs> Can I tell you my favorite Sizzle Chest story real briefly? (laughs) Mike Walker, Walker, rest in peace. If you only knew how often. Uh, Fuck, I'm crying. Okay. Uh, uh, All right. (laughs) Okay, here we go. (laughs) I want you on the show. And our core group of strategists are going to get that letter to him. <laughs> our core group of strategists are going to get that letter to him. It's from private parts. That's what they it. want. They're going to put it on a, on a carrier. They're going to put it on a carrier pigeon. <laughs> what are they going to be like little rascals, one on top of the other in a big trench coat with a hat on? <laughs> Newscast of 20 different people. It's so funny, this fake ambition. He he bails on this shit in two weeks. He can't, he realizes, he's always said, I love the announcement, but can't do the work. He bails on this shit in three days. I I did, I compiled a list of the guests they had that year. I think there was like six new people. We said that. We said that. All right, news team and TV team, pitch using. Archives, newscasts, articles, clips from private parts. What year did that movie come out? What Wait, year 97. was it? 97. February of 97. Wait, it was only 16 years old. It was only 16 years old. TV shows, newscasts of 20 diff people, Rachel <laughs> Ray, of- Kevin Bacon, <laughs> strung together for effect. What? <laughs> what the fuck is going clips on of, here? Clip, clips of Jungle the Jungle. <laughs> I, 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 Didn't they come out on the same day? I'm so lost at that slide. That slide is just literally, it's its just the ramblings of a moron. Yeah, right. it, is. it really is. From private parts. Let's get some clips. With the one where he's going. <laughs> 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 It's gonna get Eddie on. Eddie's like, oh, wait, wait, what TV shows? Son, wait, TV show, Son of the Son Beach. Of a beach. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right, let's go. Look at what we have at our disposal. Look at us. Think about it. Look at it. Yeah. We have me, me, and <sighs> <Pace> <sighs> archive. That's so funny. Demo beta memorabilia of newscasters saying, "Real, forget our Howard 100 news for a second. I'm talking about the video archive contains." video of newscasters around the country. <clears throat> Whenever we do something great or something wild or something involves a celebrity, it gets on the news. Can you imagine a publicist receiving a bunch of those edited together in a donut? <laughs> Today, uh, you know, uh, so-and-so was on the show and boom, 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 boom. Whoa, what's going on with the Howard Stern show? I get these videos, but no one else is seeing them. We have newscasters around the country talking about the Howard Stern show. <laughs> Even when Howard Stern signs with America's Got Talent, it was major news. Let the publicist see how important that is. We have an article archive. We can pull wow. 
and make these pamphlets up, these email blasts. <laughs> if people would go into the archives, they'll have everything. Tracy takes this stuff and organizes it with Chris. Uh -oh. We have Millman. What a great clip from Private Parts. Remind people that it was out there. Part of the video presentation God, that Howie TV should be putting together includes the movie Private Parts, a little something of me broadcasting into wow. the various guests we have, into the various TV shows around the country talking about us. You know, you know I love the... <clears throat> I love the we and us factor of yes, this when it is you. just me, me, you. Me. Yes, me, so me, 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 me. No, we, we, Mr. we. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. It's DiCaprio, we present to you the fourteen twenty-five mark of private parts. Uh, <laughs> I believe it speaks for itself. <laughs> at, at, the, at the fourteen twenty-five. the video mark. to the point and put it in a back in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, place the VHS in the tape and press play, please. <laughs> <laughs> 45 minute and 25 minutes. <laughs> 62 minute point. <laughs> no, recently, I was watching a tape. Rachel Ray sitting there. I was listening to the Howard Stern show this morning and I heard Kevin Bacon on there and blah, blah, blah. Whoa. Whoa. That's hundreds of thousands of dollars of advertising for Kevin Bacon. Uh, Wendy Williams on a regular basis. I was listening to my friend Howard and he said this to so and so. This goes on day and night. Monique. Us Magazine almost every week quotes something from our show. That wow. should be lifted and turned into a PR piece. Yes. I'm sorry. Did I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Fair, Fairway <laughs> Aiden wants to educate us about a donut. I don't donut. see that. Yes, I did just read that. A donut is a standard beginning and ending with a different middle. So he wants them to do videos with the same beginning and ending with a different middle to them. So I still don't understand what that means. And, All right. Uh, so basically you have like an intro and an, and and a closing and an outro which is the same outro right. right which is is always the same but then in the middle you put some sort of content that's directed toward the person they're giving it to like you know if it's if it's somebody that's in sports you'd send them talking to guys in sports somebody in movies talking to somebody in movies somebody in music talking to somebody in music so that's kind so, of what he's trying to angle at even though he doesn't have the staff to do that so stupid so that's why Krispy Kreme went out of business so flimsy <laughs> what so stupid. didn't have that business <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a Christmas oh, they stay with a mile from my Sizzle house. Oh, okay, I thought they were out of business. <laughs> no. All right, let me continue on. Come on. <clears throat> Look at the news we're making here from satellite, and these guys who are in control of these guests don't spend a minute thinking about us. <laughs> <laughs> well, that age well. <clears throat> The one who uh, lost his Monique. job for posting Ku Klux Klan fucking people on Twitter and the dead guy. This is good. What? What? What, Jenny? I'm sorry. Oh. If you don't have to do this, I don't know if you think it's a, it's up to you. I sent you a clip. Again, thanks to Boff. I downloaded <laughs> a uh, episode of Saturday Night Live from the awful 94, one of the worst seasons of history, but this one sketch is good. So it's a Howard, Rush Limbaugh takes over for Howard sketch, which Dan Aykroyd plays Rush Limbaugh. And I think Saturday Night Live hated Howard at this point because he pissed on the show all the time. Mm -hmm. So I have the entire – it's a really good sketch. And uh, Ellen Clegg plays Robin. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's just – it's a fun look. And they really, really piss on Howard in the sketch. I they love you, but I know that I will get into so much trouble know, for posting was, anything Saturday yeah. Night Live. Okay. <clears throat> so I sadly cannot do it. However, that okay. said – if you want to throw it up somewhere, you know. Can you reenact uh, yeah, it, John? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Could you guys remind me to tell you what I did all day, which is going to be a great show when we get to it. So I'm going to come back to it later, but let's continue with this. I, I don't okay. want to look through the yeah, no, 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 but please. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. So your boyfriend, Rush Limbaugh, you're passionate about him. He loves him. Okay. okay. But you enjoy him. You've been attacked on this show. You are the guy who says... uh, I'm the lone conservative voice on the show. Look at in the a pen. sea of liberals. So look at look at the look at the pen in the center. That's exactly what we're talking about. <clears throat> he really thinks writing like a calligraphied fucking wow. screed to yeah. Rush Limbaugh <laughs> is going to get him on the fucking show. Uh, uh, and, and Mr. Screed. Limbaugh, I want you to know I've been fighting the good fight. What dramatic radio would be if Rush Limbaugh showed up? Wow. It will make news We've all over the place. More news, no one's sales for really. Howard TV, insuring your job, oh, sales yeah. for serious radio, in. and great radio for us, insuring all our jobs. Threat after threat. You should be yep. marketing that campaign.
Wow. Mr. Limbaugh, I can't fight this fight alone. It would be legendary radio if you came on the Howard Stern <laughs> show. What do you say? Let's plant the seed. Could be great. Great. I would love to interview Rush Limbaugh. He would. He would have. Yeah. It would be great. And the media would love it. And they and then more media attention, more blasts out to publicists, and we become the place that not only is talked about, but that becomes the place that publicists, management. Did he have the place in Florida at this point? Yes. Uh Wiggy? Did he? I don't know. Let somebody check that. I don't want to talk before we know this. Didn't right. he announce that? Uh, I don't know. Brilliant. They're getting all of this information. and They're like, hey, maybe we should go on the Howard Stern show and take a chance. There's your letter. Oh, let's write him a note here. I'm no, Republican I'm... in a sea of liberals on Stern show. No, there's no R uh, there. No. It's just in sea of liberals. In sea. No. I'm Republican in sea of liberals. <laughs> On Stern show, I so, need you to come on the show. Take on these maniacs with me. We'll wow. have fun. Fuck wow! You. Um, so send, see this. send a short video of your classic arguments. Let's Achoo. make history. This will drive up subscriptions for Howard TV. Wow, Damn. this is wow. proofread this at all. Like, no, no Marcy no, or Gary, no. I don't care Just how dumb cheating. they are. They would have said, Look, you got to work on the, the wording, you know. Well, Marcy I'm can't sure spell. Gary we know would that, know. So. Yeah, Gary and nobody's going to instantly. Nobody's going to ask the fucking dolty English major at home <laughs> whether or not she gave it a, she gave it a look through. Oh my god, how it's wonderful. Uh, Republican and Sea of Liberals. Sea of Liberals. Sea of <laughs> So, they use proper grammar in the McCraw Hill bill. By the way, Monique, Republican. is the McGraw? Can I? I completely forget. The McGraw Hill building is not in series, right? It's a separate. It's, yes. it's, no, it's, no, no, no. Is it, is it, it is in. Is it in the lobby? It is. Where is it? I think it's maybe well this particular room that we said last week looks like where you'd have a bar mitzvah for a very very poor <laughs> Jewish child. Um, I thought that Sirius XM was in the McGraw Hill building. I thought it was across the street. I think this is across the street. Well, it's the McGraw Hill company, so I'm not necessarily right. sure. They may own both, so it must no. be. I'm but, pretty positive he didn't make people walk across so, the street to give a meeting. Well, he well, so no, all right. no first, first, but first, he bought the house. <laughs> he bought the house in 2017, so he wasn't okay. In so it's late. Okay, Cause, okay, because he just gotten those options probably in 2016. That's he had to get rid of the money. Gotcha. Um, but. The other thing, he loves dropping prepositions. Like, there should be an A in there somewhere. Uh, I mean, there, there, he yeah. does it when he speaks as well. It's yeah, crazy. I mean, he is he is a moron. I'm Republican. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> what the fuck? I am Repu like, I'm Republican. I'm, I'm, I'm Republican. <laughs> he uses in, in his speech. In what's that? Speech. What's that homo? What's that? What's that? What's that? Panty waist pen? He bra brags about Mont Blanc. Mont, Mont Blanc. Is that Mont what that Blanc. looks like? Oh, it's a yeah, very right, expensive right. pen. Very yeah. expensive. I'm pen. sure he has several. <laughs> Status symbol. Take these maniacs <laughs> on with me. Send a short video of your classic arguments. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. when you get on and you argue passionately. Why shouldn't Rush Limbaugh see that? You go, hey, you know what? This might be kind of fun. I'm gonna. You know who doesn't like when he argues pa passionately? Sean Combs. Puff Daddy. Puff Daddy doesn't like when you argue passionately, Scott DePace. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry you're out of work. Great reference. I'm going to walk in. There's my angle. I'm going to come in and defend Scott DePace after all these years. What great radio. That's so funny. After all these years, I'm going to come in and defend Scott DePace after all these years as if Rush Limbaugh knows, knows and exactly, or gives a right. fuck about who Scott hey, DePace I mean, is. Seriously. And, oh, and that I'm, Republican. <laughs> oh, that guy. Oh, yeah. Right, 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 right. I happen to know for a fact Rush Limbaugh is a huge Scott Einzinger fan, and he was so crestfallen when he left the show. I'm sure he was devastated. I, I, bet, he, I bet he was he took an extra Oxycontin that day. He actually wrote a lovely <laughs> note to Lisa G when she left as well. And guess what? <laughs> you got a job. Howard TV is going to be around. Because you got I a job. Fuck what She's about their says. jobs, People too. start hearing that Rush Limbaugh is on there. They'll They'll want to see it. Oh my God! <laughs> oh yeah, let me go. I gotta go back. Going back, I'm, I don't mean to pick on you, Mike, but wow. again, I was on your Facebook page he that put, day that I was he, writing, and uh, he put high pitch mics. If you did, he Photoshop that.
Yes. Yeah. Or did somebody do that for, on the show? It must. No, that's on. a Photoshop. I've got to Google, that's that. got to Google Howard, it. Yeah. Howard original. He couldn't <laughs> do that, man. He could no, not no do that. Well, that not this during his photography years? Yes. I, I mean, how hard is it to take a fucking head and throw it on? Like, but Mike is Mike Morales is going to save the day. Mike is going to save the motherfucking day with the entirety of the gay contingency in America. Yeah, this- by the way, this, this is the real guy. If you're wondering like who the real – this is the real guy. This is the real person that no sense of humor, panicky, you know, goes gay, any chance. I think this – if you want to see the real Howard, I think this is as close you're ever going to get more than any act he puts on or kissing. This, this is it. He's very simple man in the mind. Yes. Just, yep. Things just connect like – Big dumb guy. Big very dumb, big dumb, big dumb guy. <laughs> Big dumb guy. I have a lot of passion for gay issues. Michael Jackson, Madonna, you know, and I love that passion. Wait, wait. But put that passion Michael into the Jackson. Show. Michael, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. He's not because, gay. Oh, okay. So there's <laughs> allegations that Michael Jackson did something with children, and some of the children were, were boys. So wow. that's gay. That's gay. <laughs> Can I, exactly. Wow. Pedophilia and gay pedophilia. do not equate it. It. most of the time. But okay. Wow. Which I know you do, but amp it up this year, 2013. Write campaigns. Think about <laughs> guests. Write campaigns. Wow. Every one of us. So I get a letter wow. from Ratso. The other- By the way, if you just Google Ricky Martin album, that picture is the first fucking picture that comes up. <laughs> just throwing wow. it out there. Yeah, just so you know, that's where he goes. The day the guy who uh, worked on my book with me, and he says, I'm writing a book with Mike Tyson. Sorry, let me oh, read we, this. Wait, we okay. book rapist now? Isn't he a rapist? Isn't he convicted and rapist? I, Did Tom? Also, also, this is, this, is, this is how he starts the, <laughs> this is how he starts the slide. Also, we don't stop when we book them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> who would write also? We rape our publicists. <laughs> also, we don't stop when we book them. Book when us? we have Mike Tyson booked. Wow. That's it. We send touch points to stay fresh in their mind. I Ooh. can't wait to see you. <laughs> Who would say that to a guy like Mike Tyson? I immediately Who get would... on the phone to Gary. I go, Gary, let's book Mike Tyson because Ratso says Mike Tyson wants to come on the show. We've heard this before. Gary calls. Long story short. Okay, Mike wants to do the show in a couple of months. We've heard this before. So he sort of booked. It sort of looks good. And I can sort of tell you that it ain't going to happen. Because... By the way, if you also... <clears throat> if you Google, yep. I can't wait to see you. Yep. <laughs> in handwriting, it is the one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight thing down. Yep, and, that's, and, this, is, and this is, what, eight years later? It's eight years later. <laughs> eight years <laughs> later. So it was probably number one then. Holy shit. What's going to happen is they're going to start to plan his tour. And Good Morning America is going to say they want him or somebody's going to say they want him. And this one's going to want him and that one's going to want him. And what's going to happen is, eh, we don't need to do the Stern show. When someone says they are interested, when we put this core team together, which will happen in a few weeks. Never happen. When someone says they're interested in coming on our show and it looks pretty good, that's when the campaign begins. We say, great, can't wait to see you, looking forward to it. By the way, did you know we just had this one on? That's when the magic happens. That's yeah. when That's when you tell them about the 17 wow. times that you had Jewel on, because Mike Tyson gives a fuck about it. Look at this. Uh, oh, Salam, 41. Mike Tyson booked and touch points in the same sentence. That might be the funniest thing Howard has done in years. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Beetlejuice, write Mike Tyson a note. <laughs> you kid, you kid, Monique. That's literally would be perfectly acceptable with what he's doing. That's exactly in line. Beetlejuice, write a note. This wouldn't just if that's in part two, it wouldn't surprise me at all. <laughs> this is just. <laughs> Here's our donut cake that ATV put together. Here's the pamphlets that we now have that Sirius helped us with their art department. (laughs) Howard's really tired. Can't wait to see you. We have a date. You know, blah, 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 blah. We have a date. Pound them with how many books we've sold. Look at these moves. So we got to fucking get there. Don't let them. 
You guys notice the Elliot Often uh, enunciation and punchline he's trying to hit when he's doing mm-hmm. this? He'll mm-hmm. say, I, I think he said it before when he goes, we we are Jehovah's Witnesses, yeah, right? Yeah, the crescendo. The he does, crescendo. Yeah, because he's doing Elliot Often speaking. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> Look at that posture. Yeah. Look at that posture. Yeah. Jesus Christ. It's question mark. God. Forget, question once you've got a fish on the hook, don't let it off the hook. Wow. Okay, news team. I want news stories on how much success these people get after doing our show. This should be 50% of your focus. What? What? So he wants the news team basically to say that if Mike Tyson came in to promote whatever, which, by the way, Mike Tyson never came in to promote that cartoon, which was usually successful on um, the Cartoon Network, right, or wherever it is. Um, So how how exactly is the news team supposed to quantify the success and what hubris makes Howard think that it was just because of him that it was a success? Oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Let's do a hypothetical that Lisa G comes in three weeks later after he's been on and says, well, after Mike's appearance. This happened and this happened. She's actually going to say that on live oh air. God. It would never happen. Well, but how could it quas- how could it possibly be quantitatively correct based on them going uh, you know they go on they go uh, on all these promos. They're on 50 other fucking shows. Mike how Tyson could- had been on everything. He'd been on so many things before he did Howard's show. It wasn't a tough get either. They should they should be utterly embarrassed. They couldn't have gotten him, whatever, three four years before that. He was. If I were in the crowd, I'm like, uh, Howard, you you dated Robin Givens, right? Can't you book him? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jesus. Or not, as the case may or be. <laughs> I mean, really. And why would you want her, him at, at that point, knowing fully well how horrible he was to Robin? So, right. And how long does yep. it take for success after they've been on how it's six months? Are they going to be bringing it up again? How would you I, I, work it into any well, kind of discussion on the show it, without I mean, sounding fucking bizarre? It's, it, it is it's totally it, it, impossible because I mean, it's point. like oh, my one interview for two hours made him sell 50 million books. Yes. How do you, how do you even say it? I mean, it's you might as well uh, say something that insane. Court. Crowbar that into a conversation. Try that in, in your regular life. And, and watch and the look you're gonna get. I'm getting I'm so kind of befuddled by this 50% of their focus. What is yeah. the other 50% of their focus? Yeah. Uh, writing <laughs> news about Beth getting to get her fucking hair done did. I mean, seriously, the, the news team was the most useless 10 people to fucking talk about Howard Stern 24-7. I mean, it's a fucking joke. I just, it's just the, it's the pomposity of him Mm -hmm. to think that they need that many people to, to do what he's asking to do. I could do the entirety of this fucking presentation in my fucking free time on a Thursday. And he's, he's expecting 50 people to do this. I could put together a pamphlet. I could qualify all, all of your fucking statements. I can put together quotes from your book and from your TV shows. I I can put together a fucking donut on, on iMovies. <laughs> and seriously, we'd be done with this entire thing in a week. But meanwhile, yep. he never convened these fucking groups. Everybody never looked at him through. like it was a fucking joke. He you know, realized and, it was actual work. And, and two, I yeah. think probably less than a week, probably one week, he probably had all these people just nervous for their jobs. They're coming to him with all this bullshit, trying to make him happy. And he's like, he can you probably ne- you can't get through to him. You're not allowed to call him. So I don't even know how you would even <laughs> communicate with him at that point. He realized it was work and bailed in a matter of two weeks. Yeah. I've got a Mon, can you yeah. I've got a question. Can you send one of Hold yours? on, uh, John's drinking. What? Oh <laughs> I'm glad you heard that. It it was like my, he was on the my toilet. <laughs> um yeah, what you're bit? doing good, John. Mon, could you send one of your spies a text asking what other questions aside from Gary putting up his hand in the Q and A section? What kind of questions happened? Did many people ask questions at all? Can you ask how long the, the next part generally well, went Mom, for? She yeah, actually, that's a good she, question. she and John, she and John were on with Richie Wilson like three times in the last two years or so, and that did come up a bunch of times. So I don't know if you go back and look, but that definitely, you definitely broached that a bunch of times. Richie wasn't at this meeting. I but I think you asked him that. 
regardless. Yeah. Of the and he knows about made, the meeting, but Richie yeah, wasn't yeah. actually at this meeting. Others were, of course, but Richie right. was not. Easily, just just that way. What is it you want me to ask? How, just how long the Q and A went for after this? If it was ten minutes or twenty, because. Are, are you, what, can anyone think of a question you would want to ask Howard if you could after this, apart well, besides from like, Gary. trying to... I do believe, yeah, though, that from... when we did talk about it, everybody was so dumbfounded about yep, this entire it... thing that there wasn't really too much Q&A because I think they were all waiting to see who was going to be in like the breakout groups, what was supposed yeah. to be happening, what their responsibilities were supposed to be, but that never happened. Uh, Mo, uh, Azor seventy five is contradicting your statement <laughs> that Richie wasn't there. Um. Okay. Who oh. is Azor's? I don't know who Azor's is, but I, 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 I because I, Richie, I can. I was I was there when it was con- with a conversation. Richie wasn't there. I thought I heard he said. I, you know, I I thought I heard him say it too, but I wasn't. I there. believe I thought he was there. So we've got massive confusion here. So this is a big moment on the show. <laughs> Okay, well at well at some point I had asked him a question about something and he said to me Oh fuck I'm calling him. Hold on, let me hang up. Um <laughs> he Someone said, just said something so rude to me in the comments. Unbelievable. Well, they Someone said, called me You're Marianne from Melbourne. Someone said speak English Bon Blobial. Uh, um, <laughs> YouTube doesn't BD Mac believes do B- subtitles. How BD Mac <laughs> believes that Azores is a source, <laughs> is the uh, a play on words. Oh, a source! I love a that. Source. Well, yeah, I asked just... him a question a while ago about something with the summit meeting, and and all he wrote back to me is, "I didn't go." Uh huh. He didn't go to the meeting, so that's what he said. Listen, I can only. Richie said he asked Howard if they could call his friends. Howard was like was, a deer in the headlights. Oh, good, good. If That's they could great. call his friends, Howard's friends. Yeah, like oh, Steve Martin, interesting. His new friends, his new yeah, Steve Hampton Martin, friends. Billy Joel, the Hamptons crew. Well, that would have been no. The answer would be no. Right. Well, let me take a picture of this screen cap, and then I will ask him. Because what the fuck? All right, we'll come back yeah, to that. We'll, masters, we'll, 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 we'll circle back. We'll circle two back to saying that. that Richie changed his story. Exactly, Katie Aldana, the Hampton Circle Jerk. All those people in and around the Hamptons involved, Tersh, whatever, Lauren Michaels, Steve Martin, Alec Baldwin, Seinfeld, and people he won't. Remember, he did that whole thing. I, I, I'm not going to ask Steve Martin to come on. I'm not yeah, of him. course. But wasn't there a little something for something with Howard going to see his show on Broadway and then making Correct. sure he spoke about it the next day and then Steve his Martin came in? Quo activities, yes. With his quo. boring He's banjo Steve, playing it's, Steve Martin. Well, you remember when he had Amy Schumer on. We covered this on our show. We were doing more. And uh, Amy Schumer just goes, why are you not mentioning we were at Steve Martin's party? What's oh, the big deal? And he was like terrified to bring up <laughs> Steve Martin. He I think, turned a New into Year's like Eve a party. little baby. He went, look, yes. I, I don't know if Steve this Martin would appreciate us mentioning that on the air. And, wow. and Amy Schumer's like, I don't You know what? Care. He got into so much fucking trouble after that time he went to Mexico with the Anistons that and happens. the Kimmels and everybody that he at that point had to just. Right, stop the zit. Yes. Like, just shut the fuck up. Yep. Don't say another word about anything you do. And he even said that on air one time. He said, "I, I can't even talk about it anymore. I'm going to get in trouble." Well, I got, I have, cl- I have a clip of Beth on Andy Cohen's show admitting she has a gag order from Corona <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I haven't seen that. it. I would like to see it. My God. My God. The news department. Oh. My God. When we have successes, I want you crowing about it. Crow. You are our propaganda arm. <laughs> No, Mary Ann from Brooklyn. So not propaganda. only are you going to be working with our core team to put together propaganda pieces to send to propaganda. publishers, we'll also put it on propaganda. the radio. And after we put it on the radio, we're going to cut up those pieces and send them to management and publicists. My like vision for 2013, <laughs> an A-list guest a week, two B-list guests a week, and this is how we're going to do it. This is how. I mean, ah. Just so we know, propaganda, information, especially of a biased or misleading nature. Oh, it's such a bad word to use. It's such a a bad word word to use. Propaganda. <laughs> Should have said Worst facts word. or something. Propaganda. <laughs> Idiot. Idiot. Mention this to some people. 
This was actually the key thing that I think everybody from Reddit and such yep. after yes. this video had been leaked got fake from accounts. it. This was, was right. the fucking this the fake big... accounts. Scott Bailo is a great – who we love. is a great point of view. Howard hangs out with people like 20-plus years younger than him. All his friends, all his immediate circle at the very near his age is like 15 years. Could you imagine – Anybody you hunt, your entire immediate circle is people 20 years younger than you, and you're kissing their ass all day. And somebody 20 years younger than you puts a gag order on you that you're not yeah. allowed to talk about. It's stupid. Just, Could, what, just, what, I guess we're civilians. I don't know. You know, that's what happens when you're on the air four hours a day. You run out of things to fucking talk about. <laughs> Howard is despicable, says Wesley Ballard, to threaten an audience of people with losing their jobs when their combined income is probably less than 5% of his. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely it is. And that this is why we're redoing this show, because he is fucking despicable. So, Per a Richie Wilson post on Reddit, for the person who said I leaked the tape, they're wrong. But I did confirm the existence of the tape because I was there. I think what he means by that is that he was there at the time and people from the tapes department or the ones that actually recorded this. So yes, he was there, but I, I know there. for a fact mm -hmm. that Richie Wilson did not I will, leak. I will, I will back, I will back Monique up on that. Actually. I, I met Richie Wilson too. So, and he said he was not there. So yeah. So that's all we know. That's all we know. <laughs> name na told us name no. dropper, Dennis I'm bragging. Sorry. That I mean, was so Dennis show. said so, that with a lot of pride. <laughs> you know? I was just hey, saying, you know? so yeah, you know, the Howard Stern show I work for. How do we get the word out? So set up a fake Twitter account. Become ten different people. I don't give a shit. And then when we, when our core team says to you, we want to get Lady Gaga on the show, they announce it on Muldred. <laughs> Muldred. And all of a sudden, Lady Gaga, I, I'm telling you, every celebrity reads their Twitter stuff. Every celebrity starts getting just random. That's why you blocked fans. us, hey, you bitch. Hey, when are you going to do the Howard Stern show? We you want you on the show. And Especially they're getting all this publicity material. And they're, getting, and they're getting bombarded. And it works. I said before, Jehovah Witness, they bang on the door. we got to bang on people's doors. It's propaganda. They're forgetting about us. It's propaganda. And I'm pissed. I can see it. those fucking propaganda leaflets flying from the <laughs> air. Like that, that made me laugh so fucking hard. Whoever said that last week with like money <laughs> and pamphlets like World War II. I, I just awesome. I just don't understand. You're right. You know what it is? He's closer to 70 than he is to 50. Yeah. And he doesn't get that. His you know, his way of thinking. This whole thing was outmoded in 2013. Okay, so we're going to have a core team. It's going to be about six. Or core team, but all play. Ooh, that's what? bad. That core means that there's a small play. group, but everybody's still involved. Everyone has to do stuff. A small group coordinated all. We'll Fuck coordinated. Up. Why am I explaining it? It's so bizarre. <laughs> core, I, core team will meet. I'd rather you. you explain it, Bonnie. Well, really look, look, oh, look, I love look, them so much. Look at the bullet points, okay? Core team will meet weekly. But all are responsible for involvement of pitching guests and strategizing. Like, wouldn't the first question you'd ask him go, Howard, you work twenty, you work thirty percent of the year. So weekly means we're going to meet you on your vacation, right? You're off. Oh right. no, no, he's not. How part of that? No. We got to meet. We got to. We got to run up on you. Vacation. That doesn't you're on vacation. Mean that, yeah, but just to hear him say it. Just to hear him say it. He's not part of the core team. He's not part of the core team. No, he's not. Meetings will start March 1st at 12 p.m. That means as soon as I'm the fuck out the door, <laughs> then you yeah. get wow. and after I take a nap. <laughs> Stone dinosaur <laughs> tail. It's everybody's wow. like a quiet time from 11 to 12. And then you can, as soon as I get the fuck out of there, you can start working. <laughs> so core team, but all play. Remember that. Oh, my God. I should do a T-shirt that says that. Seven people are going to head this up. But everyone in this room, I'm telling you, is responsible for involvement, <laughs> pitching guests, and strategizing. It's up to us. If we don't do this. Isn't it involvement in pitching guests and strategizing? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. Just well, you know. Anything but what he wrote. Anything. Uh, I think we're in trouble. Why? The meeting's going to start March 1st, 12 p.m. of this huh? core team. Huh? And they're going to be calling on you. And they're going to be telling you what they need. This team will have. Oh, this is so Marcy. Now we're wow. getting into Marcy. <laughs> 
This is Marcy. This team will have dot dot yes. dot dot call clinics. Like 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 God. like what are they like? Fucking Jerry Lewis's telethon? Like what are they doing at these? They're all sitting here. Yeah, they're all sitting there with the, with the phones. On the table. Yeah. <laughs> Banks. <laughs> Weekly Shit. publicist lunches. Well, Gary Active- took care of that himself. Yeah, exactly. Actively pursuing a list guests with tracking. With tracking. Brainstorming with sessions. Well, let me just read them all out. All right, Outreach right. campaigns based on industry. Outreached to be tracked. Wow, that one's the worst. Well, Fuck. no. The thing is, the the third bullet point. There's supposed uh, to be a slash with between W and tracking, because otherwise, it's guest W tracking. It, and it's it, also yeah, actively pursuing a list. A list. <laughs> a list. Yeah. There's supposed to be a hyphen there. Skip. Oh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> uh, look at that. Well, Let's let him let's let him talk through his Yes, yes, yes. I love the call clinics. I want to know what that's about. Let's hear. This is what this team's gonna have. You will be having call clinics. What does that mean? (laughs) That means when we start making calls, we're all gonna sit in. We're gonna hear what they have to say. Oh, oh that doesn't sound legal. Wow. Sound legal. <laughs> Everything is that point, Bob. That's, is that legal? Right? Totally illegal. Go to human it's resources. Fucking... So yeah, yeah, hello, this is the Howard Stern show. Yes, you're we're no. calling on a recorded line. And then they all have to listen to somebody tell them to fuck off. <laughs> so wait, we record these calls for quality assurance. <laughs> Did they say that they were record- did you say they were recording it or everybody was just gonna listen in? I'm, I'm assuming listen from in. what he I said. Could see, yeah. I could see Marcy Turk saying, Okay, Jason, that was great. However, I have a couple of pointers for you for how you introduce yourself. <laughs> that's, and like you can that's see that that's, that's right. the way it's, that's what the call is coming from. <laughs> Listening in like your fucking customer service, Chantel at customer service, where they exactly like where the fucking call is oh, being recorded. I love it. Uh, I, I love, love, it. So love it. Can you see Mo? Uh, can you see Marcy like miming how to say something? Because you know, she did the improv yeah. classes. So she's woman like, miming. Sh- woman chanting it. Woman chanting it. Doing the, <laughs> she's doing the when you put your fingers on your mouth to smile, and you pull up the sides. You gotta smile when you talk. Like you hear it. Uh, T- Tiger Lily Touching is great. People, you- looking at people, pitching people, and whining and dining them. Whining and dining them. We yeah. will actively pursue a li- A-list guests with tracking. So I'm not just talking a good game. Mm. There will but be systems in place to track what you've done. Like what? Uh-oh. Have you helped this effort? Have you really made some sort of contribution? Well, I'm going to get a sheet. You oh. know what this reminds me of? I have to tell you, you know, when I when I worked in the garment center, right? Mm-hmm. And the salespeople used to have these kind of meetings. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like this is a sales meeting. Mm-hmm. That's what he's doing. He's trying to turn all of his retarded French fry makers into salesmen. Or an and Amway that's, meeting. That's For, not what they are. Yeah, Amway's good. Yeah, I, I like that. I don't think well, there's yeah, anyone noble right. than fucking Amway. <laughs> we are calling you because your car is due for an extended warranty. <laughs> 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 Tiger, Tiger, Tiger Lily is a great. Could you imagine Artie or Jackie or Billy West sitting through this? Could you imagine that old regime? No. On no. The no. Oh man, John. I love that. Judy Bo Booty. Yeah. Always be yeah. closing. Yes, Glenn Gary definitely influenced by that. You kid? I think that's exactly right. Perfect. <laughs> Salesforce. <laughs> Mm. All right, let's move on. They're killing it in the chat today. On the monologue stuff, I get a sheet. I know who writes the most jokes. I know whose jokes I use. Mm. I'm going to know everything about our business. Nothing will escape me. (laughs) Oh, threat. So this team will have brainstorming sessions, outreach campaigns based on whatever industry that person happens to be in, if it's uh, we're gonna we're gonna tailor it to that person's industry. If they're selling a book, if they're selling a record, we will uh, tailor make that campaign, and the outreach will be tracked. How? We will know when the last time is that we approached Lady Gaga. <laughs> Everything will be tracked. So if you're not doing your job, that is sales one hundred and one. He's making a tickler. He's making a tickler file. 
<laughs> he did what we did when we sold cars. Oh, we, you know, we talked to him six months ago. Let's go hit him up, see if he needs a car now. Exactly. Did you call Macy's today? They need more dresses. Did you sell them enough dresses at Macy's today? This is exactly what this is. See, that you collaborated with Wayne Siegel on this? Exactly. Joey, <laughs> Joey, <laughs> Joey Calabria was in six months ago. He won that Lincoln. He was looking at the Lincoln Town Car. You better give him a call. The new one came out. <laughs> call him up. <laughs> the new one's in at AMFM. <laughs> oh, well, no. <laughs> Let's look at these. Or so he couldn't funny. write organizational because you know he can't fucking spell it. It's an org, org chart. chart. Who or we want, <laughs> how we pitch, when we pitched. Next touch point. Fucking I love that he's God, still using fucking Excel to to oh to track oh this God. shit. I love Jesus this. This is Christ. so. They get worse and worse through it. You oh know? my fuck! There are, there's 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 like you know there are there are management systems that I know were available at in 2013 to manage contacts, and um, yeah. I can't even believe that this multi million dollar organization couldn't afford to spend like a few grand on a, on it's a him. couple of it's him. I know, him. I know. It's all him on the org chart. Because... So this is what the chart's going to look like. Oh, good. What do we want? How do we pitch him? When did we pitch him? And when that's are we going to touch them again? That's not an org chart. <laughs> that's, that's so this core organization. team that I put together. That's no. not an organizational chart. The, the no, I know. But chart is a hierarchy. Head. This is yes. insane. This is not org chart. We'll track that way. I want Tom Cruise. I want Tom Cruise. When's the last time you pitched him? <laughs> Everyone's got When did we touch base with his management? Here we 2000 go. John, do you want to read this in uh, Midlife Crisis voice or something like that? <laughs> Let's well, read what? Do you want to read this slide on the screen? The 13th book of success. Dude, we will track success from you on the show, Brandana. <laughs> when you're now in charge of this, we will create a handbook finding who's been on the show and how they soared. This compilation will help in future pitches. Midlife crisis. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. You know who it's loves it? G Canada loves midlife crisis. He loves it. Oh, so this was the greatest he, thing ever. Fast, fast forward a little bit. This was Brent's job because he was the one yeah. making this report. Was the, Brent there at this point? No, he wasn't. But the, he ended uh, up. This is what he was doing for. I don't think he was there in 2013. Well, they didn't mention his name until yeah, way later right. into the. It was bizarre. Yeah. Brent, Listen, he, okay. he's, he's, informing, he's informing Steve Brandano that this yeah. is what he's going to do. <laughs> in you're the in charge now, Brandano. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna... it's no coincidence Brandano was brought up in this and look who who's you know who, who's, who he who's was spearheaded. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 spearheading exactly. great great term for what he was doing. But think about yep. the fact that Brandano is going to track success. Like this is what his job is. This is something that came to me in a dream, a 2013 <laughs> <of> success. <laughs> a dream. <laughs> We're gonna write down. You know, you can almost see him in his Ebenezer, Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> like, little. Gown. <laughs> Smithers. <laughs> he takes that wig off and he puts the little cap on instead to keep his head warm. So he taps the quill to his tongue so he can, like, <laughs> put it in the quill before he starts he pulls, writing. He pulls that bed, he pulls the, the curtains around him. <laughs> Throw another log on the fire. <laughs> was the best of times. Throws another one of his stupid scarves over like a shawl. And then, and then he sits in front of one of the many chip, the many fireplaces, and eats some of that porridge. And it's just <laughs> that little cap. This is Mel Melvin, Mel Melvin, Melvin writes, nightcap on, grabbing a candle on a candle hole that runs down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, Every bit of success we have. He's wearing so if cap. a publicist calls our core team and someone isn't quite sure what the pitch is, they're going to open the oh, handbook and say, hey, by the way, did you know we did this, we accomplished that, we accomplished this, we accomplished that, we did this, we did that. We're going to fucking <laughs> give them all this, an avalanche that. of stuff that we're doing. We did that. I wrote down, Steve Brandano, you're now in charge of this. For some reason, I saw oh, you as maybe being useful for some there. Reason. I'm not 100% sure of that. 
but I'm starting to think about what components of our show, who goes where, and what teams. Uh oh, cell phones. This off. handbook <laughs> will include who's been on the show, A how handbook. they achieve success. How they and this book will help us in every single way when we make a pitch. And that's going to be done. Oh, my God. Minimum it drives me nuts time. that we work at this company uh, that has all of these resources. And we're not using them. They've got a booking department. They've got an art department. They've got a promotions department. we got to engage with them. we got to be able to say to an artist... We said last week um, that this was almost like an ode to Gary, yeah, and and how he's trying to get his almost forty year employee, and probably you know fat flesh eating Jason in line, and and basically that it was really them not doing their job, so everybody else now has to suffer for it. Massive dig at Gary. Um, things between uh, Sirius has treated us in a very odd way, but we're gonna we're gonna fix that. You stood them. You know, I've heard Scott Greenstein say, uh, oh, why would we put them on your show? Like, we're the enemy. You are. Right, Gary? There was some comment made. I forget who the artist was. Why would we put them on your show? Well, what are you, fucking high? You put them on our show because we're the only channel anyone's listening. (laughs) Can we actually just discuss the massive fucking dig at Scott Greenstein right this second? Yeah, no shit. I mean, Wow. So we're going to begin using their booking department. We're going to use their art department for sure. Right. Mm. Uh, there right. it is. So. What's the next thing? Those are our guests. But here's <laughs> the next thing. <laughs> wow. Let's wow. experience skyrockets. Ready for celebrity. This is where they just lead us into all the beautiful things they are going to do to take care of these six plus guests that they had in new for that year. Right. 2013. Yeah, that, okay. that font is that font is like everything about it. This is Ariel wow. basic and this is fucking army basic. That's exactly That's what they are. Unreal. So now we've gone to a lot of trouble to get a guest. Really we put together a core team. We're trying to get everyone in here. Wow. Nobody Marcy. on their staff looks no. remotely. <laughs> like- no. Is that Jason? Ka- is that Jason Kaplan? Yes, wow. he looks like oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was JD. I thought it was JD. You know, <laughs> this is Jason Kaplan's leg. Oh yes, it feels like wrapped <laughs> around it. And this is what it would like cut off right about here. This is nobody on their staff. Nobody. That's, that's Lipstick on a pig. The Stern Show has re- reinvented it. Now it's Jason Kaplan in a blazer. They, they looked with their blazers <laughs> on. Like how yes. horrific yeah. that was. It's, this is what happens when you give a team of people. They're slovenly disgusting animals. Seriously. There's nothing you could do. To, right. There's nothing you could do. They're all nothing. mongoloid Morlock mutants. Just leave it alone. <laughs> I love that he's Let showing John Hine wear his 19, uh, his fucking Washington Senator's shirt. His Michigan's t shirt. Yeah. This is so, a good thing, though. This is, you know, if he should have done this a long time ago. So no. I don't have a problem with it. I'm like, yeah, tell them to fucking stop all that crap. It's fucking but awful. The thing is, what's, what's truly, truly funny. Yeah, sorry, baby. What's truly funny about this is that that's like a slim fit. Uh, blazer. I mean, there and, and honestly, there is even he couldn't wear a slim fit blazer because you have to have some sort of athletic shape right. to you to actually wear a. To wear something yeah. that's like that. So all they did instead is Shuli wound up just putting his fucking mustard yellow blazer back on, and Jason <laughs> just went to like the big and tall man shop, which is directly across the street from their office, picked up like a blazer on sale just so he could have something in the office. That is absolutely yeah. what they did. That's the upgrade to their <laughs> Rachel Maddow. I finally get the fucking publicist up here who controls about 10 to 20 acts that we're trying to get up here. We finally get the artist up here and they walk into the fucking radio station and we Stop look like cursing. some people around here look like zombies, zombies from Walking Dead. We look like a college radio station. We look like we have homeless people working here. And I got to tell you something. It's off-putting and scary. Scary. Gary's you got to right. work on our appearance. That's right. 
If you're walking through the halls and you're going to be seeing celebrities and you represent this radio show and this core team has worked for six months to book someone and then the publicist walks in or the management walks in and they look and they go, oh, this show is so gross. This is their feeling. Oh, look at them. They look like bums. They don't know what they're doing. You've just blown it for me. For me. And you've blown it for yourself. For me. So what I would do is I'm going to just tell you, go the fuck home and go get dressed for work. And I'm not saying we're a suit and tie organization, not everyone, but, you know, uh, Jason, I commended you for looking like, better yeah. at work. And I appreciate it because you are in contact. People see you Stay in the halls. Uh, Gary, you too. Will always dresses well. I mean, he's greets people. He's wearing a sweater. The guy looks put together. You guys, we don't work put in together, some far says. off place. The guests come through and they see you. And if you look like you're a fucking goddamn bum, I am telling you, you will scare people away. I can't tell you how many shows I've done where I'm a guest and I walk in and whether I like it or not, I evaluate people and I go, wow, this looks like a fucking dump. It's like a college station. Oh, you say that to people? What to do, John Stewart? Yeah, they fun. looked a mess. His riders were hanging out in the hall. It's really intimidating. And I didn't feel good. I didn't have a good vibe. I probably wouldn't go back just based on that. Good vibe. So we've got to think about our image. So we're the brand. I was intimidated with Trevor Noah in the hallway. Right. The, the Howard Stern show this is, is maybe all it's the about. coolest, hippest place to work on the planet. Oh, right. <laughs> people die yeah, to come yeah, yeah. visit. People pay thousands of dollars to come sit and watch us do the show. Wait. Will, I know you're an Eagles fan. You like oh. to wear the Eagles uniform, but fuck the Eagles uniform. Uniform. Fuck, fuck your Eagles. You represent the Howard Stern show. Wear the fucking Howard Stern show logo. God, and Lance you know what? Maybe two thousand not maybe. We will two thousand thirteen. I'll I'll make a jacket, I'll make a shirt, whatever the fuck it's gotta be. Ronnie, the limo driver, where are you? I see Ronnie. Ronnie, I'm watching Howard TV, one of the best Howard TV specials. And it's you racing the car with John Liebman. Love this special, but what are you busy doing? You're busy putting the Rick's Cabaret decal on your car. Yeah, because they probably paid for it, unlike hey. you, fuckface. That's they're not sponsors. allowed to say that, and they're not allowed to say the name of the show. That fucking block party, they're not allowed to do anything. They're not allowed to say his name. You it's it's he's so contradictory here. It's ridiculous. Every well, logo, I, when on are they every allowed to say his, is all paid for. Those are paid yeah, sponsors. Right. How is that paying you extra on your fucking free time? You know, fuck you, fuck Rick's Cabaret. They don't pay your fucking bills. Uh, the Howard Stern decal should be on there. We'll make you one. You come to us if you want. One. You come to me. It's yeah. all about the Howard Stern show. You know why? Because that's all. That's all there is. It's, all. We, it's up to us to get the word out. And it's up to us to know that we're the fucking coolest place on the planet to work. We got to move from college radio station to the number one radio show in the country. There isn't one radio guy in the world that wouldn't give his left nut to work here. Uh, I know, I hear from them. Uh, Guys with morning shows. They want Bubba? to leave their morning show and come work with us. Bubba. There it is. The number, green one, the number one friggin' image. Woman in a green room. Yes. Anybody out there, just Google woman in a green room. This is the absolute first image that pops up. As if their green room would ever fucking look like that. Actually, it's 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 worse than that. You know, last time I was up there, the, the green room that they had, um, first off, what's really cool is the green room that they use for all other guests, not Howard mm -hmm. guests, is off to the right of the elevators. And every band who comes in, like their publicist or whatever, all put like a sticker on the door. So it's kind of like a they like sticker bomb. The whole fucking area is just sticker bombed all over the place. And it's super cool. And people sign the wall. They sign the doors. So it looks like it's a place you want to come and say, oh, cool. You know, so-and-so has been here. But he, he'd rather take down fucking artwork from, what's his mm -hmm. name? David Chu? No, what's his name? Just Whale Graffiti by David Cho. Thank you, Melvin That's Melvin. That's yeah. exactly what I was talking about. And that shit is worth money. And they fucking took it down. Because you know what? You're not cool. You're not cool. You you think that – I don't know who you think you are, actually. I don't he even thinks... know who it is that he's looking at as the as the gold standard here. You know what I mean? I think I think Carson? Johnny Depp. I think Mel, uh, Melvin <laughs> Melvin writes – Not Johnny Depp. Or the, or the, no, 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 no. Or the, or the About what he wants his, to his... be, who he wants that company to be. 
Carson. He he really seriously. He wants it to be like the fuck the the, the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. He, he he's rambling like somebody that has a major network show that everybody knows who he is. That, that, but I mean, he that's wants it both ways. He still wants to be considered yep. edgier than that. He exactly. wants it both. My Monique's right. There's no there's no template for this. It's, it's crap. It's bullshit. It's throwing things together, throwing, and it's going to disappear in two weeks. He's going to realize his actual work involved in all this, and he bails on it. So think about it. The core group has put together a campaign to get Eddie Vedder, or I don't know who the fuck it is, somebody in here. Tom Cruise. He loves Finally us. agrees. We get him in. And our green room looks like a dump. We're going to get rid of that whale drawing. Oh, We're going to start wow. putting up pictures that show us off gold platinum records that we've helped sell, <laughs> awards that we've won. We're going wow. to change that green room. How about all those guitars people are giving you, Howard? Why don't you put those in there? <laughs> oh, down, you mean down in the hard rock in his basement? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's read this. Green room and entire compound, everything hanging on the walls will promote our success, tell story of our greatest moments. Celebrities, gold records, broadcast awards. Where are our tellies? Wow. <laughs> Ellie? Oh, he asks about the tellies right now. Oh, my God. Listen to really this. I turned it up. Yeah. Okay. We're going to change the entire compound. <laughs> We're going to clean it up. Everything hanging on the walls will promote our success. Tell the story of our greatest moments. Gold records, broadcast awards. Where are our tellies? Okay, we paid for them, but so what? Most people don't know that. <laughs> Where are they? Who has, who has the tellies? Do we know? You got them? Oh, no, I've got some for me. I, we all have you have them? Bring them in. Okay, you can have them. Hang them on the wall. <laughs> Bring them in, you can have them. <laughs> <laughs> Better pu- you finally have a publicist up here, and our walls look wow. like jack shit. We're looking at Jeff the Drunk. Yeah, it's fun, but you know what? I know a publicist who's not in our culture goes, ew. 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 He's gross. Ew. This show's like weird. Whatever. Who knows what's in their head? I want them to walk in and see success. <laughs> I want the red carpet rolled out for that. Now, I don't mean figuratively. I mean literally. literally. I had a wonderful experience years ago. I did the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Well, there you go. Before we were on the outs. Yep. Told you. I got out of my car. They rolled out a red carpet for me. I was embarrassed. It was a little over the top. Fuck. I've never forgotten it. We will buy a red carpet. <laughs> <laughs> when a guest walks in, we will Where roll out it? the red carpet. Where are they putting that? Carpet? And they will like this. From, and from they the will elevator. get their asses kissed. And it will make a difference. They walk in. They roll out the red carpet. <laughs> they walk into a green room that says success. Success. What we've achieved. <laughs> How about we let Tony Cole cool. roll out the carpet that's on his fucking head? <laughs> they get a breakfast. So, breakfast ah! waits him. So, so basically, I'm surprised he didn't say, "Let's, you know, let's have like JD do rose petals in front of him as they walk on the red carpet <laughs> to the green room." Like, Someone can carry the ring. Is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck! It's great. Yeah, how do you get that red carpet are. down that hallway? Yeah, You've got exactly. that big door yeah, at the end, you know. Well, well, on the red carpet, why not flowers thrown at their feet coming to America? <laughs> No, it's actually yeah. just two pieces. It's two remnants. It's two red remnants, and they run out in front. Maybe you will too. Enjoy the green room breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, vicious. The viciousness. Oh, my God. This is so fucking delicious. Al Pacino and one of us. Howard, where are those tellies at? <laughs> I want to see those tellies. <laughs> tellies. Oh, this is suddenly like real time radio. Like this is big deal. This is big deal. This is a pretty good place. <laughs> I mean, we are acting now like they're doing like 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 they're doing. We're doing them a favor. <laughs> he can't. They're do doing that. us the favor. He can't. Oh. And they get bombarded. With Howard 100 News, oh my and they get bombarded God. with Howard TV in a camera. Now look, oh, this is classic. I um, I can't tell you. I went over to CNN to do an interview with Piers Morgan. I go in. I agreed to do a one-hour interview with him. I thought I was being pretty gracious. 
Oh, so good of you. Oh, Ralph is with me. He can tell you. I walk in, <laughs> of and they got Ralph, a camera. Of course. I thought I was being hair, so gracious. And I don't want to be filmed that way. I don't want to be video. But then again, I'm going like, I don't want to be a dick. So like, okay, I'll let them video. Nobody's asked my permission, and I'm aggravated. I'm really pissed. I'm never going on the Piers Morgan show again. It has nothing to do with it's Piers. So Piers was great. The show was great. I don't want to go through it. We are not looking at our business life <laughs> from the wow. perspective of a performer. When Jewel walks in, and if she hasn't put her makeup on, or she's just fucking feeling premenstrual, and she walks in, and we got the camera there, Howard TV. There it is. It's wow. so, so sexist, really. There really it is. There sexist. it is. Oh, jeez. Post interview. Arr. Arr. I'm not coming back. I wouldn't come back. I'm telling you, I would not come back. I've been interviewed all over the place. So I'm real fucking edgy. I'm real touchy about this shit. When I do Letterman, I am never photographed ahead of time until I'm ready. Can't find it a smile. Now, it's a different story. If our core team says to the publicist or the manager, whoever's coming, hey, we do have a TV show. We have a news Wait, did I miss the girl? Right. Yeah, you go, go you never back. approach the celebrity. Go back. Yeah, no, it's just it's really, yeah, it's a couple of seconds classic. back. A little, little further, a little further back. Yeah, you go. Who walks Sorry. in, and if she hasn't put her makeup on, or she's just fucking feeling premenstrual, and she walks in, and we got the camera there, Howard oh. TV. <laughs> Lisa G, I want to interview you. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. I mean, fuck you. I'm never. Fuck you. That's why I have 10 people on the goddamn team. The fucking. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> like paper that you wiped your ass with, and fucking do a DNA analysis on it for news. Like seriously, uh, he 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 is the fucking ringmaster here. I love his yep. anger at something that he fucking created. It's just shocking to me. It's it's all makeup and grunting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Never coming back. I'm not coming back. I wouldn't come back. I'm telling you, I would not come back. I've been interviewed all over the place. Wait, so I'm real fucking edgy. I'm real touchy about this shit. When I do Letterman, I am never photographed ahead of time. God damn. Until I'm ready. That vanity. Now, you homo. You so it's gay. It's a different story. If our core team says to it's the publicist or the manager, whoever's coming, hey, we do have a TV show. We have a news department. Would it be all right? You never approach the celebrity. Because what happened to me appears, they came up to me. They go, Howard, would you mind... If we talk uh, to you on camera, you know what I said? No, it's no problem because I don't want to be a dick. I can't be tagged as the guy who's a dick. They there didn't go to my agent who was with me because they know the agent would say no. We've got to be aware of the experience of somebody coming into our station. It's got to be the full experience. The red carpet comes out. There's no scary looking fucking college looking guys walking around in the halls who look really kind of threatening. Threatening. Can you tell me when the last time a fat white boy wearing jorts looked scary to you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kevin Smith. Never. Yeah, yeah. Kevin Smith. <laughs> <laughs> When Kevin Seriously. Smith tried to cast me in Jay and Silent Bob 6. <laughs> How are these guys threatening by any stretch of anyone's imagination? I know. Seriously. I mean, I know. JD, JD could be a little... Off -putting, creepy, but creepy, well, but not not threatening. Yeah, Rupert Pumpkin writes: E show and Howard TV ambushes the shit out of their guests all the time, but Howie doesn't like it when somebody does it to him. Crazy Alice and Chance. Half hour early in the speech, he was touting about Howard News was a great asset because they can interview the guests after and they get more attention. Make up your fucking mind. You know, it's yeah. all over the place. The mixed signals and the hypocrisy. Yeah. Just you're sitting in the office. What do we do with this? But I think the staff probably knew him well enough that this will not take. He's just not, he has no work <laughs> ethic at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, two master. <laughs> One trip on the shoelace and it could be over for fucking Jewel. <laughs> as long as he doesn't have a jar of peanut butter, do a little <laughs> <laughs> The only thing those guys are threatening is the prepared breakfast. <laughs> <That's so good>. <laughs> <laughs> Who look like college kids. Scary white college kids. Yeah. There's food. Oh. The whole look great. Awards. Wow. Look what these guys have become. Oh, what awards? What awards? What awards? Tell No pre or post Tell interviews it. without a, 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 a previous, uh, an okay. 
No one except guest relations people are permitted in the green room talking to the guests. No bombarding. It looks like a uh, fuck. Guest relation people. Who the fuck's are- a guest, guest relations person on this show? <laughs> well, I can, guess- I put up my, can I put up my sixth grade presidential physical fitness award? <laughs> I put up my in case, in case Doug comes back. <laughs> I got my I put my track medals up on the wall. <laughs> With my 150 600 yard dash. My four by my four by four hundred. I'll put it up there. Are you a hey, are you a guest relation people? If not, stay the fuck back, okay? <laughs> Fucking zoo out there. You've got to leave people alone. Tim, you can't go in the green room and ask people questions like Quentin Tarantino. You just can't. You can't do it. There's got to be one person assigned from our core team. Huh? It's got to be organized. If you come across one of these people in the hall, look professional. Ooh. All guests escorted. Escort waiting for them in lobby. Brought up in elevator. Escorted in and out of green room, escorted to and from bathroom, escorted in and out of studio, escorted to gonna like that. and down to lobby. No exceptions. Can you imagine waiting to up be for escorted? Wow. Like, what are they like? Prisoners? Ronnie, think of that for a second. You're 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 a celebrity. You're on this show, and you have fucking Ronnie up your ass. Like you have to go take a piss, and Ronnie's up your ass going to the bathroom with you. It's like. What the fuck? I can't walk out the hall. Well, he's got a reason. He's got a reason why, which is the John Bon Jovi story of him turning up. So he's going to explain that, and then and that still leaves you going, "What? What the fuck?" (laughs) It was psychotic. This is psychotic. I mean, honestly. Melvin Melvin brings up a great point. Food, like when Mindy Kaling sent the office a package of bagels, cream cheese, and locks after her appearance, and Gary immediately took all the locks home with him. Monsters, they're fucking monsters. We had an experience years ago. Bon Jovi, John Bon Jovi was going to do us a favor. He couldn't get upstairs, couldn't get in the building. You know what he said? Fuck you guys. He tried to get in once, second time he gave up and said, Fuck you. He was pissed. What happened? Chantel down at the front desk did not <laughs> allow him in. Explain, <laughs> explain to me, explain to me why a Bon Jovi who is recognized around the world would not be able to get into the serious office. Tell me. Tell me well, why. It's not serious. He couldn't get to his compound. How Remember? could that be? That, well, that door's locked. That, that door's, door's locked. locked. That's why. And I guess no one yeah, could be reached inside. Phone call at the reception area? Phone call? Phone well, call? Or wait, was it quiet time? It was Howard napping? <clears throat> and no phones are allowed to be ringing at that point. Exactly. Like, <laughs> F- fairway made his Chantel prefers Richie Sambora. <laughs> <laughs> wait, but wasn't that, but wasn't that the, the current host of the uh, the show on Hits 1? Was it because she was the receptionist for a while? Maybe, maybe she just didn't yeah. Like no, 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 there's three receptionists. You've there. been there, there's, Monique. Yeah, there's three receptionists. Oh, yeah. so everybody is covered. Everybody is fucking covered. And there's no way. There's no way that he. I, I don't even understand the story. I think the story is stupid, and he lied. Yes. Who the fuck are we? <laughs> on Jovi's a big star. Sold 80 million albums. Some ridiculous amount like that. Oh He's doing God. us a favor, and he can't get into the building. The building. 2013. What happens? Mm-hmm. When Bon Jovi or anybody else comes into this building, there's an escort waiting for them in the lobby. They're brought up in the elevator. They're escorted in and out of the green room. They're escorted to and from the bathroom. They're escorted in and out of the studio. They're escorted to the elevator and down to the lobby, no exceptions. The person who's going to do this is Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> when I- Look at the- Okay. I left the Jimmy Kimmel show the last time. Wow. About two weeks later, I get a box in the mail with a lovely thank you note. Lovely. (laughs) Picture um, of of myself and Jimmy framed Mm. the Jimmy Kimmel show and a beautiful note. (laughs) Wow. And a beautiful note. I was impressed. I was like, wow. What? I I can't. (laughs) Does he ever (laughs) stop with the note? Yeah, in his whole life, he's fucking obsessed with that. Does he write nice (laughs) notes? Howard, exactly. you have to write a nice note when they do something for you. Howard. <laughs> Publicist, management, and talent get flowers. Flowers. A picture flowers. and a thank, thank you, you note. note. We are doing this from now on. <laughs> it's He's 60, and he's just trying to figure this out now. 
Like these things are revelations. And this is like, you know, someone in the 30s, like Conan O'Brien just starting out at NBC in the early 90s. And you kind of gradually, but he's just catching yep, yeah. on to some of these just showbiz cliches now. And it looks so stale. And to be in an audience and see this has got to just make you just gasp and go, I, I, he, there's no way he's following through with this. Uh, yes, Sin Lu Hu. Who's paying for this? Mm. What monies is this coming out of? That's the, the greatest the, question the ever. Staff, the staff's pay. It's not and, what did, and what did he I be the listening. first person to get a fucking gift in the mail and throw it right the fuck out and be the first yeah, one the to garbage, tell you that? Right in the garbage, yep. then brag about it. Yep. Fucking cunt. Well, we I wait, remember. We, uh, who, go ahead, who, who who got that uh, the the gift basket from him that had the the fucking um, the, the grab bag stuff. Rappaport. Rappaport had the juice. Rappaport had the juice box in there. Yeah, so I, I guess that's what they graduated to. That's a great. That's a great. We got to dig that up again. Rappaport exposed Fucking juice box. The, the, the contents of the gift basket. I remember. I heard this. I was just, Adam when Adam Carolla filled it. Uh, took over for Howard on the West Coast. I heard a couple of his shows, and he had his program director on a guy. I don't know if anybody in the chat knows. This guy's name is Jack Silver. I don't know. I've never forgot this. And he told Adam that Howard was like would refuse to pay for peanut butter and bottled water and shit in the green room and he like he approached him with it and he's like like this seven dollars it would have take to satiate the guest was this crazy notion and the stern show refused to pay for anything green room oriented no. That's the sad, wow, isn't it? Sad. Wow. It's really sad. Yep. This is 2005. I think he was making 33 million dollars a year. Wow. And he can't work out. And can he? Okay, you have. Sorry, go, Dennis. Go. But and he couldn't. And he blamed. And he constantly blamed K Rock for being cheap. Yeah. He constantly yeah. blamed them. You know, it was his guest. He constantly blamed them. They couldn't even get water for him. Oh please! Oh, when, they, water. Free, um, when they used to get the free cupcakes, they would eat them like men, insane. You know, they would grab them all. They would eat it like fucking wolves at bay, and <laughs> and that would be the end of it. Like they, they're, they're, yeah, they, they have no. They're no so depressed that cooth, something like cooth. that would make them feel so much better. Or like you know, crumbs bakery would give them stuff. freebies. It would never yeah. be that they paid for it. It had to be like oh, no. a wig pro quo. Yeah, but now Howard's so paranoid that if somebody sends him something that's a freebie, he won't even allow it in the studio. Remember, there was like right. this whole thing where I think it was even Marion from Brooklyn or something sent them up like a bunch of um, cakes and things like that. He's like, I yep. don't know that Marion sent it. Who's tasting this? I'm not yeah, tasting it's got anthrax. it. Anthrax. It'll have anthrax in it, you know. Dr. That's Drew's it. Mad Magazines. That's how fucking paranoid he is. He's yep. really oh, yeah. scared that people are going to poison him. But if a fa- but if Robert Downey Jr. sent mm-hmm. him that same food, you think he'd throw it out? Of it's no. about how low you are in the totem pole. It's not about germ. The germophobia goes away when you're famous enough, right? We're no, not allergic I, I, to he wouldn't eat it. He'd throw it out, but he'd pretend he ate it. Or at he'd least say pretend he ate it, and right. it was delicious. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've never had a job where I could eat meat as much as these pigs on the job. <laughs> I know, I know. That's all. No, they That's never true. stop eating. Okay, let's continue. A nice memento, and Jimmy's now always sitting on my desk because I like the picture. You like job that done. Picture? Wow. Publicist, management, and talent get flowers, a picture, a thank you, a note, something. We're doing this in 2013. Not maybe we're doing it. Not only do we have to work the celebrity, Who's doing we have this? to work their management. That's the key to achieving oh. our goal of an A-list guest every week. Oh my God. And two B-lists. So hold on. You like you? You're B-list. So. That you know, that love seat picture. So that's what he would send them. That love horrible, fuck, the whole love set. The love set picture is what they got sent. Oh my yeah. god, Jesus <laughs> Christ! Would you want to be reminded of that? <laughs> the other hand. I'm getting right. This is after seven years at Sirius. Seven, seven years. years. Yep. Yep. Oh six to thirteen. This is February of uh, thirteen. Yeah, again, it's an ode to fucking Gary. You're not getting me be- better guests. Wow. And you all look like shit. That's basically what I got out of wow. this. Wow. Oh, and P.S. TV's team, if you don't up your game, you're all getting fucking canned. That's what he's saying. <laughs> wow. Thing. Right? Wow. Publicist is treated like God. They, they, they don't just represent one person. Who are we kidding? 
Look at the note. Dear Howard, thank you for joining us. It was a pleasure to have you on JKL. Please come visit us again soon. All the best, Jimmy and all your friends at Jimmy Kimmel Live. Jason already takes a picture. Yeah. If a publicist says after an interview, hey, can I go in and get a picture with Howard? Take the picture and send them the picture, too, in a frame. In a frame. We're going to do that. Frame. Dollar store. Yeah, dollar store. We're, we're behind, man. Store. We're We're falling behind. And we've got to do stuff like this. And you got to think, wow. you know what? You got to just think of everything. When I came up with this presentation for you, I was up till two, three in the morning every fucking night because I was so pissed that we're not doing this shit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <sighs> we respect the publicist. If a publicist says interview is over, get Let's read. Wow. We respect publicists. If a publicist says interview is over, someone comes in and tells me and we stop. Right. Like he ever uh -huh. does that. Never, never publicists happened. get treated as nice or better than guests. There yes. are refreshments for all. For all. Elegant follow-up and thank <laughs> yous. Except Gilbert thank Godfrey. Yous. Right. No exception. Thank yous. Hey, yous thank guys. Yous. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, yous. Thanks, thanks yous. yous. Thanks, okay, thanks, yous. Thanks, there yous. Thanks, yous. How many thanks times you. have we heard a guest on? Thanks, yous. How many times on air have we heard a guest say, do you have water? Anybody? Like, yeah. Oh, how several is, times. How um, is this not prepped at the Robert, couch? Robert Plant. The Robert Plant was 25 minutes in or so before he fuck. He's like, how, I, I, can I have some water, please? Like, literally, he was sitting there for 25 minutes talking and had to ask flat out for a glass for a bottle of water i mean come on that's so yeah, it's fuck, fucking that's dumb. So fuck that 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 couch they sit on they should have had a little fridge next to it who wouldn't fucking think of that full of coke pepsi uh, mountain dew everything john loves you know what? <laughs> all you have to do is put like a little thing of water there maybe like a little packet of like mints or anything something to make the guest feel comfortable in there Oh, they all but, love that but, shit. They me, love soft drinks. They'd be drinking the, Pepsi and everything. I'd put it all in that little problem, fridge next me, He's the problem all along. I yeah. mean, the horrible radar and unhip, and he has no pop culture reference or baseline whatsoever when new people come in. And he's pitched these people, <laughs> and he turns them down to look cool. He's too lazy to research them. And now he wants to – he's suddenly interested. He doesn't know he's pulling out these just tired fucking name, Julia Roberts, who we had on in 1998. He's the problem. You know, it's it's not – I, I the, the, the backwalk, I can't even process – the hypocrisy here. Um, oh, what? The? It, it, it's mad. Oh, no, it's hypocrisy is massive because as somebody pointed out in, in, the, in, the, in the comments, he's yelling at them for being incompetent as he's doing a PowerPoint that he didn't proofread. Right. I mean, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The hypocrisy yeah. with that is just insane. I mean, yeah. I mean too you know, and no, then no. he doesn't want to spend money. He doesn't want to spend money or anything. And he's blaming them for not providing something to a guest exactly. that the guest should have. Right. And you're right. Mr. Cybird says no coffee in the green room. And I remember several thousand occasions where Howard would berate somebody because he didn't want the hot water from the hot water machine because it might have germs. He wants it fresh from the schivoso roach infested <laughs> Greek deli downstairs that yeah. he has no idea where the fuck the hot water comes from. To Master then says Rogan pays the airfare to get to his mm -hmm. studio and usually the guests have the run of his massive facility before the interview. That's how you treat a fucking guest. Exactly. Wow. That's how you treat a guest. <laughs> It's really, this is just as... And then, and then certainly, I know times have changed a little bit, certainly at the time, you know, guests would typically do those late night shows and promoting their movies at the end of the week. So Thursday and Friday, you're not on. So how are we supposed to book people when you're not on? That's a huge swath of guests yeah. you're being And they don't want to come in time. in the morning. They don't want to come exactly. in in the morning. You know, well, certainly not good, first thing good point morning. though, John. No, no, not, not like no. 7 a.m., no. Right. No, who wants and to get right? Who wants to get nobody the fucking I mean, process. in the time of COVID, I think it's a little bit different because people are home; they don't have well, to like really roll out of bed. But that's no excuse because he still doesn't have good fucking guests on. He's, he's still pre he's pre-recording those. The West Coast people pre-recorded. 
there's well, no... uh, we don't know that for sure. That's allegedly. So let's I'm get that out. Amassing yeah. a lot of evidence now. <laughs> a lot of are. evidence pointing to yes. We do not know it yeah. for sure, though. We do what not. does Groovin? Yeah, what does Groovin factor into this too? And I guess the second half is somebody oh, says, "What do we do when there's no guests? What is Groove? this show?" Groove. <laughs> you gro- Groove. Wesley Ballard says, "I think this is him being jealous of Oprah, who never had to beg for a guest because she sure. could deliver for her guests when they needed promotion." Absolutely. So that that you can quantify. You know, yes. we said Metrics. last week, Oprah, Oprah has a book club. Mm-hmm. You know that. Okay, week one, this person sold ten thousand copies. They go on Oprah. The next week, they sold a hundred thousand copies. I mean, it's just pure metrics. Howard usually has people in where a movie's opening. It's like, well, how fucking hard is that? You know? And, and, you know, and the other thing is that the audiences are completely different. I mean, Oprah is mainly going to house frows. And, you know, they. it's very easy to see what's happening with that because even when Oprah was still in the air, there was social media. And you could see the, the social media buzz from those people, from normal people promoting it yeah. because they saw it on Oprah's show. Right. Howard's Howard's inability to be able to understand social media is honestly one of the greatest Dude. tells of how he is just not the yeah, king of the any social media. media aspect. Definitely. I ended the interview. Why? No, I want to respect her no, you don't. or him. I don't know who it was. I want to respect <laughs> these people. Even I want know to the say to them, we're pros and we want to work with you. And now you'll have a relationship. Publicists get treated <laughs> treated nicer or or better than guests because they're the ones that control this this campaign we're on. Here's an action point. You need to write this down. Think of a <laughs> thank you list for a guest. Give your suggestions to core team by March first. Think uh, of a great thank you list. What does that mean? Um, what does I that have mean? No clue. Uh, thank maybe you, he'll, list. Uh, maybe he'll tell us. Wait, let's see. Maybe he'll tell us. Hold on. Think of a great thank you list for a guest. What can we do no. to please a guest? Huh? Them. Ralph, you got lots of ideas. I want to hear from you. Oh, I bet he does. <laughs> There's a lot of people in here who make lots of suggestions and then it kind of dies. But well, not now lots of you're money. Be listened to. <laughs> Give your suggestions. Oh, that was the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I forgot that it ended just so abruptly like that. It's yeah, painful. It's it hurts. It's like getting a band aid ripped off or something. So, why does it, yo, know, this is the part that always is so befuddling. Why does it end exactly right there? Like, why does it fade out? It fades to black, too. He's going to yeah. say Marcy. That's so weird. Can we just to- be- totally, Bon. It's th- there's a Marcy drop coming up. Yeah, and they were told to give shut it, it down to from behind. Marcy. Absolutely. Be they're that, that sensitive one. about her. Let's just see. Yeah, Think of that. a great thank you list for a guest. Slow it down. Sopranos ending. What can we do? Says Cindy Lou. <laughs> please, a guest. I should have brought Ralph, you got lots in. of ideas. I want to hear from you. There's a lot of people in here who make lots of suggestions and then it kind of dies. Well, now you're going to be listened to. Give your suggestions. Oh, there give your suggestions to Marcy. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Good call. Good call, Bon. Wow. That's exactly what would fill that in. What don't you think it was exactly what he wrote there? Give suggestions to core team? No, no, no. Be Marcy. What can we do? Could, maybe, could, maybe, maybe. Could please, be, she comes guess. up right after that. Ralph, you've got lots of ideas. I want to hear from you. <laughs> There's a lot of people in here who make lots of suggestions and then it kind of dies. Well, now you're going to be listened to. This is like the Zapruder film where we're rewinding it. <laughs> it's so weird, though. It is weird how that ends, huh? It, it makes no sense of where it ends. Marcy and the core team, you Marcy. know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Did yeah. you know for a fact? Or... <laughs> You're right, Rooster Cybers. This is also complicated, isn't it? Can't one person deal with the guests like a guest relations person? Yes, of course they can be. He doesn't understand that, though. You know, as much as I like to fault his his crew as being, you know, McDonald's employees, and not that there's anything wrong with being a McDonald's employee, uh, but don't expect that employee to be able to immediately do a publicity or PR presentation for you. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. 
They should have their own in-house PR person. That's what they should have. I mean, I, I don't even understand how it's supposed to work when you're not taking responsibility for <clears throat> the actions of your own people. The anger in him is like retarded. Oh, oh it, 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 it was retarding. It's retard anger. Um, the, the funny <laughs> thing is, <laughs> the funny thing is that, he, you know, once again, this is somebody that's supposed to be the king of all media. And by even by this point, 2013, you know, Except social TV media, movies. social media is something at this point. And yeah, the Internet huge. is something at this point. And this he is so stupid and so out of touch and so set in his ancient ways that you're right. If he had just had a small two people two people that knew how to work the internet, how to work websites. It would be a thousand times more publicity than the nonsense that he's trying to promote here with pamphlets and fucking Jesus fuck 19 year olds yeah. today could do a better yeah. fucking job at this shit than anybody uh, on that staff. A 19 year old. Oh, well, they're also afraid of statistics. You'll never hear their actual listener. We, you know, you Sabian told oh, you good point. at their peak, six hundred thousand listeners is all they had, even in the earliest days of what the peak of their interest, and everybody was curious. Um, and so, he, you can't, you know, there's, there's no you, quantifiable statistics on social media is their biggest nightmare because they don't even want to tell you how many listeners they have. So well, they're not going to amplify that. Right. And everything on Twitter was ripping them a new asshole. So it was right. not fun or funny so, for them anymore. And Howard, you know, read that shit. And that's why oh, they absolutely. had to cut it off. Well, the you thing know, is. With, with, oh, my God. John, you know what, guys? Nancy, I guess what? you might be fucking right. Maybe somebody only had a 60 minute tape in that fucking thing oh <clears> and then God. had to change tape. You remember yeah. how reductive he was to, to poor Dr. Drew, the whole Mad Magazine stuff. And oh, he's not famous enough to give me it. I'm going to throw him in the garbage. I'm going to brag about Dr. Drew. Lest us has double the followers Howard does on Twitter yep. when it last. I checked it out two weeks ago. So it's interesting to see like how much he elevates himself and go any just any of you go on Twitter and go how many weird celebrities have more followers on Twitter and the like yeah. than Howard does. It's crazy. I mean, these are people who consider in his eyes so well, beneath him, so D less. Yeah, Dr. And Drew is even that followed. famous. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Dr. Drew is two and a half million followers. To Howard's one point, but he promotes himself. They they do something like that. Howard's Howard's Twitter too. Like there's all these caveats and all these too cool for school moves. He tries to pull it. He's he's bigger than it. Like, he won't tweet his thoughts because he wants to quote save it for the air. Like you can't say anything. You have no thoughts from from fucking Thursday to Sunday. I have no thoughts, so I can't tweet anything because I could I could turn this into you. Could, you're not. You can Im imitate your parents and talk about Dancing with the Stars. You have no thoughts. So he yeah, can't he even can't, use his Twitter yeah. to facilitate anything. He can't even tweet rules. well done to the football team who won the game. Right. You know, it is so right. weird. Nothing. He's made up such a – he's got so many barricades in his brain. They well, he, he locks off the whole world. He's fucked well, in the head. Well, he, you know, <laughs> his own personal account, he blocks fucking everybody that disagrees with them. He's probably blocked right. more people that follow him. That's a great point. Four million blocks. Yeah. John, so John, John's gone. So, so no, he's back. He's back. All right. So, um, <laughs> I'm never gone. Okay. So, everybody, <laughs> thank you so much gone. for participating tonight. Um, I want you guys to know, seriously, in both the Twitch and the YouTube, your comments tonight were phenomenal. Oh, they really were. They were just yeah. delicious. That's and so sometimes good. when you guys hear us laughing, and I know we get complaints about it all the time, it's Fuck because you. we're looking at the at the read on the right hand side and it just kills us sometimes you guys are so goddamn witty i, I yep. don't even think that we could be as fast as some of you are so i i, I want to thank you all for that and i really really appreciate you and so does everybody who does the show with us and have a good night and and hopefully we can do this again next week i, mean, I second that i second that about the comments if we yeah. Say your comments are beautiful <laughs> because we're looking at you.